The following is brought to you by the Social Suplex Podcast Network. Hey, this is Scott Norton, and you're listening to Keeping It Strong Style. Yo, this is Rich Ladder from One Nation Radio. This is brought to you by the Social Suplex Podcast Network. We present to you the Ace of Podcasts, Keeping It Strong Style. Let's go. It's the Ace of Podcasts, Keeping It Strong Style. Covering New Japan, they ready to hold it down. Jeremy Donovan and the young boy Josh. Come and hit a job out in Barrio the Frost. From Tokyo Dome over to the G1. Social Suplex is a network where we can get it done. I'm a chiller. And let them have it Cause this is just an intro Keeping the strong style Six stars from the get go Boy Yeah from Tampa Bay To the Tokyo Dome This is Keeping It Strong Style With your host Jeremy Donovan And the young boy Joshua Smith And thank you for listening Welcome to Keeping It Strong Style The Asa Podcast On the Social Suplex Podcast Network Jeremy Donovan here With the young boy Josh Smith On today's show, we'll preview wrestling Satsuma no Kuni and cover all this news in the world of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Please support our show by subscribing and following the Social Suplex Podcast Network or keeping a strong style on the podcast app of your choice and leaving a rating interview. You can also get the network's podcast over at socialsuplex.com. Check out our Pro Wrestling Tees store, prowrestlingtees.com slash social suplex. That's where you can get your official Keeping It Strong Style t-shirt. If you enjoy this podcast, please consider making a one-time or monthly donation by visiting socialsuplex.com slash donate and click on the donate button under the Keeping It Strong Style logo. Young boy, how you doing, man? I'm uh, doing well. Uh, it's a blessed day. We're here. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, you know, Shinny drawing 800 cork in. I don't know. It's. John Moxley's defending the title on Wednesday against Powerhouse Hobbs. You know, God put breath in my lungs. I don't know, man. It's it's a good day. It's a bad. It's a day. We're here. We're doing keeping a strong style. <laughs> like uh, every week, uh, we had a question here. Or no, it's a yeah, I guess a question here from uh, Less Commission seven two five two. Says I watch you guys for the first time on YouTube reviewing Secure Genesis. Josh, are you styling the Simon Gotch look, my brother? It's uh, I like to call it the El Guapo because I am a handsome man. So, you know, that's one reason when we start uh, going live with the video, you guys are definitely going to want to tune in, you know? Yeah, you see the the, mush, the mustache live uh, on the stream. <laughs> yeah, and I know uh, I put that first because I think we're pretty much about ready to, to launch everything. Uh, the streams working great videos working great. Uh, and we got, uh, pretty much the, the back end set up of how we're going to be launching the live stream show. So maybe we'll make that announcement next week. Uh, do a big, a big announcement on social all over the place on the show and get you guys, uh, locked in and how you can get the weekly live video stream along with other uh bonus content that will be uh coming out in the future i'm thinking going beard really well i tried it before and it's always turned out pretty bad but i feel like maybe i haven't been um patient enough to like really give it time to grow out to its full potential you know plus for christmas i got one of those beard kits with like the rollers and like the edgers and the coils yeah 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 so um, I might give it a shot, you know, and, and if it looks terrible, I can always get rid of it. But like the mustache came out so well, I feel like I, I mean, the beard is a little patchy, but like, you know, sometimes you just have to embrace the genetics that God gave you, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, you could do the, uh, the hangman page where he has like the, the really thick mustache mustache with the beard underneath. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm pretty much kind of doing, I forget the, the guy, but the, the actor from, um, the Walking Dead, he sort of sports that look, so, you know, might go that route. Yeah, and also, too, for uh, people wanting to see some video, we are still, we're also putting some video clips out on the Social Suplex YouTube channel. Uh, our, our John Moxley uh, clip got a, a lot of views last week, brought some new subscribers to the Social Suplex channel, so go ahead and make sure you subscribe to that channel. We put clips out there, all of the hosts of the other shows, they put clips out, 
and all the, the full length podcasts are on the YouTube as well. Um, Google Podcasts is going away, so YouTube, YouTube Music is going to be your your way if you're a Google user to uh, follow the show. You can subscribe to all the podcasts on YouTube, YouTube Music. Go to our Social Suplex YouTube channel. You get all get all, all the audio, audio, get all the clips, uh, be good stuff. One thing that I've done here, Jeremy, I don't know if you can tell. So, like right now, I'm looking like dead center at the camera, right? Yeah. So I've given myself a little bit more space where I've got the background behind me, but I can't see you because typically I'll have the camera on top of the the computer. But when I do that, I have a limited range to work with. So I'm, I, I'm kind of in out of sorts because like, I can't see my dog. I hear you. I can feel you in here, but I can't see you. And it's uh, and then like, you'll see me like when I'm looking over here, like I, I'm looking at you now. And that's <laughs> Interesting. That's uh, up there. I've also I've also noticed like I don't I I can't handle really watching us on uh, the YouTube when I do I'm like cringe you know <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> notice that I just do weird shit anytime you're talking like I'm just doing weird things like I'm like cracking my back or like moving my mouth in weird ways or I don't know just fucking like sit, like I'm watching myself I'm like bro sit still like what the fuck's wrong with you bro. Yeah, it's funny. I think one of the first clips we posted, somebody was like, this is weird seeing this on video. I was like, <laughs> weird in a good way or weird in a bad way? <laughs> uh, they said weird yeah, in a good no. way. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting uh, for people to kind of jump in. And, you know, with the live stream, you'll be able to comment live. Um, it kind of chat you know, as the show is going on, drop comments in. And so, yeah, it'll be, it'll be a really uh, fun, new way to experience the show. I'm not going to read those. Jeremy's just going to have to, like, tell me what what the fuck people are saying basically (laughs) but if you guys ask good enough questions that might prompt us to have a good topic to talk about so we can drop one of these uh little clips one of these gimmicks on uh youtube yeah and uh you know so go from there yeah so uh first thing we got to talk about here is a, a hot topic uh i don't think it should wait for the news it's something that you know, every every New Japan fan, there's been a uh, you know battle lines drawn. People are going back and forth on X, on Reddit, all over the place, and it's about the news of John Moxley's first title defense. So we all thought the first defense was going to be wrestling Don Taku against Ren Narita, but uh, John Moxley you know made his return to AEW TV. Last Wednesday on Dynamite, kind of cut his uh, big promo, and we saw a feud kind of kickstart between the Blackpool Combat Club and the Don Callis family, which did, led to a, a match being booked between John Moxley and Powerhouse Hobbs. And then Saturday on Collision, it was announced uh, Don Callis cut a promo, said he pulled some strings. Um, dating back to you know Wrestle Kingdom 12, getting uh, Jericho and Omega to happen, he, he used those that favor to get power ho- powerhouse Hobbs and IWGP World Heavyweight Title match. So this coming Wednesday on Dynamite in Jacksonville, Florida, Daly's Place, John Moxley will defend the IWGP World Heavyweight Title against Powerhouse Hobbs. Yeah, so I mean, peeling back the curtain just a little bit, Jeremy, um, and I feel comfortable kind of saying this out loud now since Dave Meltzer has already uh, gone public with it, but he basically alluded to the idea that right now with some of the booking that kind of exists between New Japan and AEW that both that Tony Khan, uh, Rocky Romero and Gato are all working in conjunction with one another. Um, to kind of facilitate that and that actually court like that correlates with what we were told in Chicago through anonymous sources Um, not something we were going to like come on the air and like be like oh breaking news we heard this you know because I I, we I mean we heard it I don't know if it's true but Dave is saying it and it kind of seems like that's the case with this most current update yeah and so I'll see this has led a lot of fans there's been a lot of debate on whether or not this is a bad idea, good idea. Um, I, I guess I can go first because I feel like we're going to be on a different side to the other feel here a little bit. Um, so, uh, well, if you don't agree with me, I'm gonna be pissed. So you better <laughs> just 
You better figure out what you know <laughs> I'm going to say and then agree with me, all right? Well, I, I kind of know what you're going to say. I've seen some of your comments <laughs> on uh, the Discord uh, server. I've seen some of your comments on our show uh, Twitter account. So I, I kind of know where you're going to what you're going to say, where you're coming from. But here's I got my, us engagement. <laughs> uh, here's my my thoughts on it. I I totally understand and get why people are mad and upset. You know, this is not the same as like you know people being mad and upset about Mox winning the title in the first place. Like I, I totally get why people are mad and upset. I saw a lot of really valid, good points that. Uh, you made Josh. Other people have made online uh, who don't really stiff like this Josh. decision. Said so what? You said stiff Josh. I did. Well, you said me and then Josh and other people online. I'm like, who? What Josh are you talking about? Stiff Josh? Uh, I guess so. Yeah, I, I thought I didn't say you, but uh, anyway, yeah. So I've seen a bunch of uh, people online, uh, you know, making a lot of really good points on why this is not the best booking decision, and and I think a lot of those points are valid. I think a lot of it makes sense uh for me i personally am not upset about the booking decision and uh i don't know I, i'm just not as angry as some other people are i think for me um if this was more of a kenny omega situation where you know kenny he won the belt the u.s title at russell kingdom in january of that year and then he didn't end up defending it until march of that year on Dynamite against Jeff Cobb, and then he didn't defend it again until Forbidden Door, where he lost it to Will Ospreay, not making any other New Japan dates, not coming to Japan, not defending the title. You know, here in the situation, we know we, we have dates on Mox. We know he's coming to Japan. He's working both nights of Wrestling Dantaku. He's scheduled for resurgence. Uh, reports say he's scheduled for... Um, the Kazuna Road Tour, which I think is called like the the Soul New Japan Soul Tour, and he's scheduled for Dominion. So we we know we got dates on John Moxley. So it, I think I'd be very upset if it was all right. He's defending against Hobbs, and then he's not defending again until Forbidden Door, and then he's dropping it, and then it's a, it's a similar Kenny Omega situation. Uh, but we, right. we we know that he's making New Japan dates, uh, and also I think we all know that Mox is not losing to Hobbs. So this is not really going to affect, you know, the booking going forward. It's kind of a, you know, a specialty title match kind of thing. He's going to beat Hobbs and then also he's going to go on to face Narita, go on to face Shooter and then whoever else he's going to face. And I know I just feel like this could be a, a lot worse. Uh, I mean, it's not like um, it's being treated like some other titles that come on AEW. You know, AEW works for a lot of other promotions and, and we've seen um some other promotions all come in we've seen like the triple a mega title uh we've seen some like cmll titles and sometimes those get thrown on a rampage those get thrown in collision and so you know if this was you know john moxley defending the title against evil uno 10 o'clock friday on rampage yeah that, that that's a little ridiculous or if this was john moxley defending against chuck taylor you know, nine thirty Saturday on Collision. I think that'd be really bad, but it's on the A show on Dynamite. It's against Hobbs, who's a guy who's been pushed as a monster. He's in one of the top heel factions, uh, and so I think you can get some eyeballs on the title. You can potentially get some AEW fans kind of clued in and hooked in on what John Moxley is doing in New Japan. You can bring some eyeballs over to uh, NJPW World, kind of tap into that Western fan, help you draw in, in the Western market. You know, you got this resurgence show that's coming up. Needs to sell tickets. He'll be back in August for, for uh, Capital Collision. Um, so I think it kind of helps there, but I, I'm just not, yeah, as upset as the people are about this. So, I mean, there there, there are things, there's so many converging um views and ideas and personalities and fandoms that are all kind of intertwined into this. Um, and it'd be hard for me to sort of, I don't know. I feel, I almost feel like the obligation to speak for the Tony Khan haters, you know, the anti <laughs> squad. and, and I'm not, and l- let's be clear. Let's keep it a buck. I'm not in that group personally. I'm, I am a fan of AEW. Um, uh, maybe obviously, I'm not doing an AEW podcast, so it's not like it's my my day one. But I, I I'm a fan. I watch the show uh, periodically, 
and I don't have a problem with the idea of John Moxley defending the IWGP title on Dynamite. Period. What I have an issue with is quite a few things. Um, number one, um, Will Hobbs, grade A talent, million dollar look, a guy that should be pushed, a guy that should be used. And, um, you know, I, let's not even uh, mince words here. Is there the possibility that there are some fans out there? And I, I don't know if I, 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 I couldn't identify them, but is there a possibility that there's a sentiment that some fans hypothetically don't want? Uh, Will Hobbs to be the the challenger because he's a person of color. That's definitely a possibility. Racism is alive and well in 2024. For me, that's not it either. Um, it's pretty simple. The guy didn't earn the title shot. He's never factored into New Japan storylines or New Japan's kayfabe one way or the other. And at best, on his best day right now, the highest you could ever call him in in. AEW is an upper mid Carter, but he's realistically more like a monster mid Carter, a guy that they dust off every now and again, and is pretty much as of now. And this isn't speaking to his character, or speaking to his talents, but just the way he's been booked on the show, he's a no hoper. If he's a guy that challenges for like the world title, uh, which I don't even know if he ever has, I doubt it. Um, I, I, I can't remember him challenging. It could be maybe during like the dark days. Maybe he could have gotten something, but I don't think he has. He's not going to win the title. You know what I mean? And he's not a top draw and he's not a top star in the company. Maybe one day that will happen for him. But like his greatest claim to fame is like beating Chris Jericho, I think, at this point. Um, and maybe like beating Ricky Starks clean in a, in a feud ender. He's not a guy that should be the first challenger for John Moxley's IWGP heavyweight title on North American television. The message that it sends to, and the optics of it, it makes it look like the IWGP title is a significantly inferior title to the AEW title. Um, because I mean, maybe this headlines the show that's possible, but to me, this screams like nine o'clock hour match. <laughs> that goes like sub 15 minutes and, and you know, Will Hobbs puts up a valiant effort and, and then John Moxley beats him. Honestly, this would have been a fine title eliminator style match. AEW is like very famous for having those title. We just, we're going to review one later on the show where Rocky Romero challenges, um, Roderick strong, Roderick strong in a title eliminator, you know, number one contender type situation. That would have been the perfect slotting for a guy like Will Hobbs who has, never worked for new japan never been ranked never, i mean not that there's rankings but like has never just he's not even part of the company in any way facet shape or form and he's a mid-card guy and basically what's happening here and, and and there's no two ways about it it's just the truth new japan's getting a little homey again by AEW, and um now i there are varying reactions to this there there are some people that are really really upset there's some people that just don't care and then there's people that are like in the middle or whatever um and i guess that's fine but it's just the truth the truth is they're taking john moxley's first tile defense putting it on north american television for AEW, and giving him a significantly inferior challenger who hasn't done anything to deserve the title shot yeah, and I think that is definitely, you know, a valid point. And I would have been fine, yeah, if they did a, a title eliminator match. And, yeah, because we know, regardless, Hobbs is not winning. So you could have right. done a title, title eliminator. Oh, yeah, if he beats Mox, you know, he'll be next in line after the resurgence match. And you could have played that up. And then, obviously, Mox wins, and then you forget about it. And, you know, I'm not saying, you know, I, I like the booking decision or, like, I'm asking for this or they should have done it. I would have been perfectly fine if, this never happened, right. and, and and Mox was just you know doing New Japan, uh, but we're here, and I think I don't know. I just feel like I kind of expect it now uh, from the the AEW relationship, and I'm also definitely there's a lot of influence. I know that the reports are obviously New Japan is it's their title; they're still involved in the booking decisions. But obviously, if Rocky Romero, or our good friend, who's a VP in both companies, and you know the talks of Tony Khan, I'm sure there is a lot of heavy 
AEW influence with Aussie Moxley, and it's something I think you kind of mentioned a few weeks ago, where it's like, all right, how much is Tony Khan willing to give up Moxley when you know they're on a TV renewal uh, year? They they need to get ratings up. Mox is the top draw. He's already missed a lot of TV. They want to get him on TV, and you know, cut a great promo the last week. The strongest. Say that one more time. The ratings haven't been the strongest lately. Yeah, um, you know they've been finishing, you know, in, in top ten uh, every Wednesday night. You know, usually top three, top five. Um, but yeah, I'll see Moxley. He's the heart and soul of that promotion. Um, he rating draw, uh, merchandise draw, top draw, um, and so he's definitely a guy they're going to want to utilize on TV. Um, so I'll see from a Tony Khan standpoint, I get I'll see. Hey, it's my guy. I want to use him, and also you know I'm a, I'm a fanboy and I love the. I don't need to be title. I want to have a defense on my show. So from his standpoint, I get that. But also from the New Japan standpoint, it's like, all right, we already have established the story of Ren Narita, Shota Umino. Those are the kind of the next players. And then this just kind of gets thrown out of nowhere. I mean, I will. There are some positives. One thing I will say, uh, this past um, today's Road to show, Chris Charlton did an immaculate job at spinning the the story painting the picture and explaining what occurred in the kayfabe when it comes to um don Callis and basically putting all the heat on don Callis for the, the western new japan fans that are tuning in so i thought he did a really good job with that and that's fine also the theme so far from what we're seeing is that john moxley is taking on the younger generation of challengers in new japan and Will Hobbs can somewhat thematically fit into that role as well. You know, a guy that's on the come up who hasn't had a title shot the same way Shota Umino hasn't, the same way Ren Narita hasn't. So there is some comparison, some similarities. Um, I think where where it really breaks down is like for, for this, like the AEW fans that feel so passionate that they need to defend this, I think what it really comes down to if we're just keeping it a buck is that they're afraid that with TV negotiations and TV rights deals coming up, any kind of complaint, any sort of criticism or any sort of slight against the brand that they love is going to hurt the chances of a better television deal. And I feel like that's like the perception or the underlying current of what motivates their arguments and why they're willing to look past the reality that like at the end of the day, this is it's, it's, poor booking and on the new japan side i think most of those fans it's an inferiority complex they see a company that came in and in a in a matter of a couple short years became the number two by a wide margin and really usurped their role uh not just worldwide but especially in the west and so they feel some kind of way about being mistreated by their supposed partner you know mm. and there's varying degrees to how people feel about that there's some like very heavy pro heavy like gatekeeper type fans that like i've listened to some shows this past week where they fucking hate tony khan you know what i mean <laughs> um, that exists that sentiment is out there and then there's others who are just like damn this devalues the iwgb title and like the only real valid argument I hear from people in the space that are keeping it a buck, you know, two that I can think of just kind of throwing it out there and they're, they're friends of the show. Um, Adam from, um, uh, big audio nightmare. Yeah. Big audio nightmare. And then rich Latta, you know, both of them talked about how, um, this title's already been devalued by, and that's a valid argument. The title has been devalued by new Japan, by a variety of booking decisions. And so to them, it's like, what, you know, what's one more slight <laughs> against a title that's already been devalued. And I do think that there is a point to that, but I think for new Japan fans, their hope was taking the title off Naito and putting it on Moxley and getting him to work with the young guys was potentially a push in a new direction to where, um, you know, and el the title gets elevated, prestige gets added to the to the title, and instead it's getting booked like a lower mid card belt on AEW's television, which is really not what I think most people envision for this title run. Um, long term, 
do I think two or three weeks from now we're going to remember this and people, the outrage is going to be as warranted? No, I don't. But I also don't think that this is that different. Um, I, I made the meme. People saw it. Uh, when Scott Norton was IWGP title and he defended against Lodi and he defended against Van Hammer on Monday Nitro. Um, far and, and now, obviously, Will Hobbs, much greater talent than those guys, but the optics of it, it's not that different. It's kind of the exact same thing. It's its a mid-card no-hoper guy getting booked in a position for a title that, like, realistically, I think the way that New Japan fans see the IWGP title, if Moxley's holding it, the type of guys that should be challenging for it would be, like, Adam Cole, Chris Jericho, MJF, Swerve, Hangman Adam Page, Samoa Joe. That's the kind of caliber Kenny Omega uh, Will Osprey, Kazushiko Okada, <laughs> Jay Dan- White, like Danielson, Danielson. So you know the kind of guys that are like the upper echelon main eventers of the of the program. Those are the ki- kind of matches that should be taking place for the for that title, and um, it's not happening. So they, I, I, I see all sides. You know, I'm I'm, I'm not going to be a bad faith actor here and just hold firm to one side, but. At the end of the day, I do think this is going to blow over and people are going to forget about it. I just think it is a shame that New Japan is letting it happen. And I I think it's a shame that Tony Khan decided that this was the right booking decision for for the first partners because optically it just doesn't look good. And and last thing I will say, imagine, if you will, just to kind of throw a scenario out there, um, Swerve Strickland, friend of the show, incredible talent. Congratulations, first African American uh, world champion for AEW, uh, and I said this in, in Rich's comments, and I just want to throw this out there because this this highlights how New Japan fans feel. What if he had to defend his newly minted AEW world title at Road to Dantaku Night Three in Cork and Hall against the Great Okan? Because that's the equivalent of what they've done to John Moxley and to the New Japan fans. Yeah, well, well, no, obviously Tony Khan will, will not let that happen. You know, if it's going to be defended, he'd be like, hey, put that on Don, Don Taku, put that on uh, Dominion. Uh, so again, that's where the power dynamic happens. And that's there. the point. And yeah. that's the point. It's the same thing that it, that would be optically so fucking bad looking for the AEW title. And for anyone, you know, and, and then the, the argument would, you know, from someone like me, if I was playing bad faith actor, I'd be like, well, I mean, look what they did to that title in Wembley with Adam Cole and MJF throwing the title down, hugging each other, fighting over who's the better friend. You know, what's one more slight against the AEW title? You know, yeah, uh, that's my argument. Yeah, well, one um, good thing I think that they're doing that we haven't really seen in the past. I feel like they're actually just talking about it more. You know, in the past, there's been stuff happening with AEW wrestlers on New Japan shows or winning titles and. They haven't really shown highlights or mentioned it, but I think, you know, they've been kind of driving home the point since Moxley won the belt. You know, they talked about, oh, he won the belt in Chicago. They showed clips. You know, they're, they're constantly mentioning the IWGP and what it means and kind of promoting the fact that Moxley is a, it's a new Japan champion. So I think at least if, you know, if we're going to have this, at least that's kind of a step in the right direction to kind of actually act, you know, show that it happened. You know, even when Kenny won the U.S. title, it was like, it was only really mentioned when he def- defended against Cobb. Besides that, it was just kind of like hidden away. So, I mean, at least there's some visibility there. It, it, I agree. There is some visibility. But what does that ultimately do for New Japan? Because Kenny was the – it's not a one-for-one. One. You're correct. There are differences. But when Kenny was the U.S. champion, he came out with that belt. He defended against Jeff Cobb. How many, like, subscriptions to New Japan World do you think really went up from that? You know what I mean? Like, it didn't do much for them. Um, at the end of the day, John Moxley is working a much more hectic and busy schedule and, um, really offering himself up to be able to work all these extra dates for new Japan and, and to be a, a defending champion, which is especially in Japan, which is definitely welcome. But at the end of the day, what does that tell? And, you know, we're, we're going to use the term, the casual fan. What does that tell him, <laughs> the casual fan who turn who tunes in on a Wednesday night and they're like, oh, John Moxley's the the New Japan champion, and he's defending against Will Hobbs, you know? Now, granted, they've had some throwaway 
IW or AEW title defenses on TV before against guys that were no hopers. So maybe the best case scenario here, and and this is me just being optimistic. Maybe we get a situation or a scenario that's similar to like when Kenny Omega defended the AEW title against a guy like Phoenix, someone who like had no sh- no chance of winning, but like a classic match was birthed out of it. Unfortunately, it didn't seem to do much for the trajectory of, of Phoenix's career um, mm-hmm. coming out of that, but maybe it'll be different for Will Hobbs. I don't know. But like to me, the idea that the IWGP title is a story beat and a, and a placeholder in the middle of a mid card feud involving Don Callis's family, not the most prestigious thing in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, jump into some questions here uh, to further talk about this topic. Uh, so first, and, and from, if we answer any of them, then we could just skip over them, I guess. <laughs> uh, so first question here from Rambone's Slam Pigs is on a scale from minor tragedy to global catastrophe. How bad is it that the IWGP heavyweight title is being defended on live television against a credible mid-card opponent for storyline reasons? And see, here's an example. You know, I'm just kind of uh, inferring based on the sarcasm. <laughs> we Rambo Slam Pig's been a, a listener for a long time. And, you know, th- those are valid points. And he's being a little sarcastic. And he's like, you know, titles on national television, credible mid-card opponent. There's a storyline reason for it. He seems happy with it. And I think that there probably are those fans like yourself, Jeremy, who are okay to some extent not a hundred percent but like they see the positives yeah and for me like on that scale like to me it's like a, a minor a minor personal tragedy like it's, it's going to be a footnote in this tile defense like you mentioned a few weeks from now a few months from now years from now are we going to remember that john moxley defending the title against powerhouse hobbs on you know april 24th dynamite no and maybe that's maybe I, that's the issue maybe we, we needed to, we do need to remember all defenses but are we going to remember, is this going to be a big thing months from now? And for someone like me that like for better or for worse gets emotional when I see that round belt that Fujinami carried and that Vader carried. And when I see the crown belt that Hashimoto carried and when I see, you know, Brock Lesnar with the V3 and all that and the V4 that was held by Tanahashi and Okada, like, yeah, to me. There is a certain level and prestige to this title, even if it's a different title. It's like, to me, it's spiritually the same. And I'm like, yeah, that that winged belt that was carried by Okada and Ibushi and all those guys. Like, I, I, I do think that there is a devaluing factor. And for someone like me, like a hardcore fan, and not that you and I'm not saying you're not, but like, I'm just saying, like, the way I view my fandom, I'm like, fuck, this kind of sucks. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. I I'll probably end up watching the match, but it's not like as a new Japan fan, I did not like think like once I, once I heard this was happening, I was like, Oh, I got to tune in Wednesday to see IWGP talent defense. I was like, I'm probably going to skip the show honestly. And then maybe, I don't know, cherry pick it if, if it's good, but I doubt it will be honestly. Well, yeah, I guess we'll see. Um, Next question here from at just Bobby. 294 is Mox defending the IWGP world title at Dynamite degrading the title. I think we kind of touched on it a little yeah, bit. I, I think to some to some extent, yes. I, I think it can be seen that way. Um, again, I feel like this is not going to be a big thing that's remembered uh, down the line. And I, I think the thing that could start to hurt it is if, all right, this is just first of many. It, it's Hobbs this week, and then we're just having... Every week as a ratings bump, we're going to have Moxley defend the title until he goes to Japan. Well, you know, one thing I will say, I, I don't want to put all the blame on Tony Khan and AEW, although they hold some blame here, in my opinion. But like New Japan holds blame here because they're allowing this to happen. They've agreed to it. They think it's a good idea. And it is one in a numerous mounting number of things that they've done with this belt that devalue it whether that's evil Sonata, the erasure of the IWGP lineage. I mean, you, we could keep going on, but there's been a, a number of things they've done. And this is just another that devalue what like four or five years ago, if you asked most wrestling fans, what's the most prestigious wrestling 
belt out there, they would be like the IWGP. Even like, even the Fed bots would have been like the IWGP is like the belt. You know, it holds this certain level of cachet. And like this winged belt, this butterfly belt, it's not, <laughs> it's not received that same way. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, there was a big downfall, you know, once Evil got it. And since then, it's been hit or miss what they've done with that title. And I just want to throw this out there. I know people don't want to hear, but Naito hasn't done shit to help that belt either. (laughs) (laughs) Next question here from uh, Tim Hunter says, how many IWGP title defenses in a time period of, say, three months are too many IWGP title defenses? Here's where I'm not going to complain. I've always thought that the title should be defended more often than it has been historically and we are in a very active period where i think it's a great benefit of the western expansion where when we're getting ready to go into like super juniors we have u.s dates set up we have japanese dates set up we have like a a very busy schedule for the title there's so many storyline and um challenger opportunities that are being presented here and they could do some really cool and creative things i'm not opposed to the idea of having three or four title defenses between now and you know dominion yeah i think i think especially you know usually uh you you do like a fighting champion kind of gimmick somebody that wants to defend the belt often which i think kind of works for moxley yeah i think that's kind of a a cool thing especially since the history of the title like you mentioned it's usually we have these fewer defenses these super long title reigns and this kind of puts the the title in jeopardy of the champion doing all these big title matches and there potentially could be a title change. So, um, and I, I did see somebody on an ex, I forget who it was, you know, kind of talking about how this affects the defense records. It's like, all right, you know, a guy like could see a Naito, like he only went V two and now like Moxley is guaranteed to be at least V three at this point. Uh, and who knows if there's more defenses, like could he rack up and, you know, get this, uh, get a big, you know, title record reign. Well, one thing I will just throw out there. Um, I know most fans are like kind of they've come up in the IWGP era, but in the totality of New Japan Pro Wrestling's history, like and I actually have a thread. I need to update the thread, but like most of the, the lengthy title runs with lengthy defense records that can't be broken were set before the IWGP era ever even existed. Um, Antonio Noki's got like three of the longest <laughs> title reigns with the most defenses. And they were all NWF title reigns. Same thing with like Fujinami, same thing with tiger mask. Those were all WWF variant titles. They all existed before the IWGP came into existence in the early eighties. So, you know, th- I mean, this belt, like I said, it's a spiritual successor to the IWGP heavyweight title, but it is a different title. It has a different lineage It does have a different legacy. We're going to see, we talked about this years ago when Chris Samson was on the show where we're like, they're resetting the records to some extent and we're moving on to a new era with new belts and new lineages that are not beholden to Kazushika Okada's unbreakable IWGB defense record. And, and, And the greatest evidence of that recently was Zack Sabre Jr.'s run with the a new Japan strong television title. He had 16 title defenses. Yeah. I think the other point that Samson made is like, all right, it's a new generation. They need new titles. They need to establish their, their new legacies here. And especially now with Okada being gone, it's like, yeah, we definitely need to establish some new record and new reigns. And you can't do that with the, the lineage of the IWGB heavyweight title, um, which I mean, I personally, I would have preferred them to keep it, the title, keep the lineage the way it was. Um, but, can't go back now. <laughs> uh, next question here from Atlas Earth says, probably good to ask how many tile changes. Uh, no, actually, never mind. Got the oh no, it's a similar question well, actually. It, 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 it's a similar question, but they're asking how many title changes for that belt within three months mm-hmm. are also too much. Yeah. So you know, if the belt changes hands in a very short succession, how many time? How like hot potatoing the belt? You know, we're getting into like. WCW 2000, uh, WWF 1999, and probably like New Japan early 2000s territory if that happens. 
And I think that this is something that a lot of people are expecting is for John Moxley to turn around and drop the belt in a short succession, um, which may happen, but it might not. He might hold it for a lot longer than people are expecting him to. Yeah. I mean, I feel at the least, I feel like Forbidden Door is like the law. Lo- he's going he's gonna to go into Forbidden Door, I feel, as a champion. Which is first, Forbidden Door or Dominion? Dominion. Yeah. If Dominion's happening first, then Forbidden Door feels like a, a much more likely destination for the title drop, in my opinion. Yeah. If he even drops the title, he could retain at Forbidden Door. <laughs> he could retain, yes. And I just want to say, if this, and who knows, I one thing I will say, for all their faults, that they might potentially have AW and the the booking of Tony Khan. They're very reactive to online discourse and the negative um, feedback that people have might feed into the future booking that both new Japan and, and he have for this title. And so there's a part of me that's a little apprehensive where I'm like, I don't know if I want to see John Moxley have a long run. If they're going to keep doing like, you know, bullshit throwaway tile defenses on TV, but they might react to this and be like, you know what? They're right. We're not doing the right thing here. So let's just get through this. And then the next time we do this, if there is a next time we do it big, you know? Yeah. Or they could, you know, change course and be like, all right, we're going to do Mox versus Brian Danielson this Wednesday for their time. That's what I mean. When I, when I say do it big, I mean like that exactly something Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Uh, next question here from Greg Starks on Twitter it says, did Tanahashi not realize Gabe was just cutting a promo the other week? He didn't have to take it literally. Oh, uh, that's dirty. <laughs> <My man. laughs> uh, sad goal 886. What are your thoughts on the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship being defended on television? Will a title match on an AEW pay-per-view make more sense? Should it even be defended on an AEW program of any kind outside of Forbidden Door? I'm fine with it. I mean, I think that if you want to get the most eyeballs on a title defense, even though there might be quote unquote less prestige than a pay-per-view television's fine. You know what? I don't see anything that's wrong with it, especially with how important like media rights are in, in the current modern age. It's just the setup. It's just the fact that the title shot was unearned. It's just the caliber of opponent. Um, that's, I think, what most people are upset about here. Yeah, I think people would be less upset if there was, yeah, more of a build to it. And it was a Brian Danielson, a Chris Jericho, a Will Ospreay, a Kanosuke Takeshita, somebody that's, you know, a, a oh, bigger star. Would be so great. <laughs> well, I mean, which could happen. I mean, BCC and the, the Callis family are feuding, so maybe that's on deck. But I think people would want a, uh, you know, a top star. They would want more of a build. And, you know, there's already stuff going on in New Japan. We already set up Ren Narita. We set up Shota Umino as the next two challengers. And now you have an AEW guy just kind of jumping a line. Somebody that's not even been on any kind of New Japan program. It's not like it's, you know, Eddie Kingston or uh, somebody else like that. Or even like Osprey or Okada that have some kind of link to New Japan. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that in the future, if they do more defenses on TV, they should build it up. And it should be somebody um, bigger. Next question here from Less Commission 7252 says K Fabe or not, is Suji and Gabe Kid right about how New Japan are treating the IWGP championship by making a random title match on Dynamite this week with Moxley facing Hobbs? It would never happen with the AEW title. <laughs> yeah. Um and hell no, maybe they set something up for Hobbs to face one of these guys at Forbidden Door. Let's see. Maybe, but The point still stands. Yeah. And then last question on the topic here from the Dark Soldier. Should AEW consider pulling a TNA and putting the IWGP world title on Hobbs without letting New Japan know? I'm sure it'll piss off people over in Japan, but man, it'll be a swerve, bro. I don't know that. Did did TNA ever do that? I've never heard of that. Wasn't there a thing where, like, uh, wasn't it Magnus and Doug Williams, didn't they win, like, the oh, IWGP tag yeah. titles? 
Yeah, I think that did happen. See, I I was thinking of more the W. So WCW, they had Liger lose the IWGP junior title to Juventud Guerrera when he smashed him in the head with a, a beer bottle. And um, and then he won it back before he went to Japan. But it was something where like for years, New Japan and and the quote unquote IWGP committee, they didn't uh, recognize that title change because it was done completely without the this was like in 99. So this is like the doldrums of WCW like they <laughs> They did not approve that. And that was like one of the the breaking points of their relationship. So that's actually happened a few times. Yeah. All right. Well, that wraps up our talk about John Moxley and powerhouse Hobbs. I'm sure we'll talk more about that next week with the follow-up of that match. And I'm sure there'll be more controversy to come with John Moxley as champion. But uh, let's move on to what's going on in Japan. We have the Wrestling Don Taku Tour that's going off. We had the first televised show today, April 22nd, from Cork and Hall. Road to Wrestling Don Taku. Uh, show opened up. We had the Bullet Club team of Chase Owens, Kenta, and Taiji Ishimori defeating the Bishamon team, Hirokyoto Yoshihashi, teaming up with Katsuma Murashima. Let me ask you something. This is going to make me look so bad if I'm wrong, which I, I I probably am. But did we not, did we cover the Taiwan show last week? We did. Yeah. Bro. So when I, (laughs) (laughs) so when I do keeping it strong style, like I, I mentioned this in the chat, like this is like catharsis for me. So very often, like I, I, I come in, we get our thoughts out, we throw them out there and then I, I blank on what we talked about. Like, I don't remember very much about the show at all. So I'm like all week. I was like, do I need to be thinking about what happened in Taiwan? Like, do I need to prepare that? And now I'm looking at the the rundown. I'm like, Oh, I guess, I guess I probably talked about that last week. I just don't remember <laughs> it all. Yeah. I mean, we kind of uh, did a speed run on it because we talked a lot about Windy city riot for a majority of the time and Moxley beating Naito that we didn't have much time. Like we didn't dive in and give, you know, hole for hold and big analysis on it, but we, we did talk Let's about it. Let's go back and cover that. So starting <laughs> off, we had ax wang versus. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah. So. Chase Owens, Kenta, and Taiji Shimori, they defeat Bishamon and Murashima. And uh, this essentially is a, a preview match because Chase Owens and Kenta are once again, as the former champions, right back in line to challenge for the IWGP heavyweight title. So we thought we were we thought we were done, but <laughs> yeah, uh uh-uh. uh. Turns out the killer is still alive and they're back for revenge and they they're they're not taking any names they're they're just fucking everybody up so owens and kenta are are on the loose and apparently for whatever reason we got owens kenta and ishimori we thought they were going to be in that um never tournament they declared for it but the best they could give him was goto yoshihashi and the young lion so (laughs) yeah and ishimori uh did get the win here with the uh What's his finisher? The uh, the bone. Oh wow. Bone lock. Yeah, bone lock. Can't believe I blanked on that. Yeah, bone lock. The uh, label lock uh, on Murashima. And again, this is you know they're building a lot of momentum for Ishimori. He's been picking up a lot of wins. Need to pull up a uh, Chris Samson to give the stats here. But he's had a, a lot of wins over the last several months. Also, we're going into best of the Super Juniors next month. So I'm sure he's going to be a uh, big player in whatever block he's going to be in. I'm not worried. He's going to have to see my dog Doki. <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll talk about Doki here in the main event, but yeah, he's you see my dog TJP. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, man's picking up wins. Bushi picked up a win. All right, let's hey, talk hey. about Bushi. You know, put Bushi in the B block. The B in the B block could stand for Bushi. He could go to the, the quarterfinals, <laughs> go to the, the semis, the finals. <laughs> yeah. So I um, I'll, thank you once again to all of the shows that we reached out to that. Uh, plugged our meetup uh, a few weeks ago during Wendy City Riot. So I decided, you know what? I need to get some different perspectives. I'm going to start listening to these shows. So I started a New Japan podcast like playlist. Mm. I've been listening to everybody and really good stuff that's out there. Very different from what we do. But you know what they don't do? They don't get off these jokes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, uh, moving on to the <laughs> next. <laughs> uh, moving on to the next match, we had the TMDK team of Kosei Fujita, Mikey Nichols, Shane Hayes, and Zack Saber Jr. They defeated the Girls of Destiny team of ELP Hikaleo Jado and Young Lion Shoma Kato. Nine minutes and thirty-two seconds. Yeah, so very interesting. It seems like we're on a collision course for a rematch between the former strong open weight tag team champions god 2.0 versus the current champions tmdk and so sort of uh, a bit of a preview here um i wasn't sure where god was going to go from here but it looks like they're right in line for another title challenge but with all the rumors about what whatever might be happening with haku sons and then the bloodline like i don't know like you know there's a lot of uh, reports out there you have to wonder, like, is Hikaleo long for, for Shinigan? I don't know. Yeah, he might not be. I mean, that's the reason for them dropping the IWGB tag title so quickly and then now dropping the strong titles. But, yeah, they are in line. Uh, I believe one of the knights of Don Taku, they'll be challenging Haste and Nichols. And I think that match could tell us a lot. If they lose, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe Hikaleo's on the way out. I'm not 100% sure of ELP's contract status i think he may have resigned but i'm not 100 percent sure so uh we do know when they're, they're doing that media tour in december you know our show and some other new japan podcasts they were quickly you know talking about their contract status and wanting to get that out there that their contracts are coming up so we'll, we'll see what's one week, the future one week ago 411 mania and jpw contract status of hikaleo and elp currently unknown hmm well, I think uh, Hick- Hickaleo did that. Murky. Murky? Yeah. Yeah, I think Hickaleo did an interview, I think, recently this week, saying that his contract is up in June, I think. Yeah, Hickaleo's is up in June. Uh, apparently, according to the rumors, ELP's was up in January, so he might be working without a contract or agreement right now. And... um. Last year, Hikaleo was in active talks with WWE before, uh, you know, the Vince McMahon stuff popped off. So, you know, and that had put like potential deals on hold, including like the negotiations at the time with Jay White that were going on in the company. So um, very, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so TMDK here, they they get the win and, you know, they're uh, it seems like they want Fujita to uh get some gold and since they all three of them have championships now. And so they're working towards uh, Fujita getting some kind of championship. Yeah, they're definitely pushing Fujita. Obviously he did just come off of that loss last week in Taiwan, but um, they're giving him every opportunity in the world. So he picks up the win here. Very impressive, nasty looking Boston crab. Yeah. And he's been, you know, very arrogant, very cocky, really living up that young punk uh, monitor uh, moniker, um, you know, being the, the Ichiban, Ichiban uh, sweet punk or something like that. His new nickname is. Um, so, yeah, he, he's living up the TMDK gimmick. He's doing great stuff. And yeah, I think bright things are in the future for him, especially come uh, Super Juniors. So uh, following that, we had the House of Torture team, Dick Togo, Evil, Ren Narita, Yoshinobu Kanemaru and Yujiro Takahashi. They defeated the team of Tomohiro Ishii, Toriano, Hiroshi Tanahashi, Bolton Oleg, and Shota Umino, 9 minutes and 55 seconds. Yeah, so House of Torture, they pick up a big W here. Um, recently, they were defeated in the finals of the Never Openweight Six-Man Tag Team Tournament to crown new champions. Those new winners, obviously, were the team of um, Tanahashi, Oleg Bolton, and Toriano. So, a return match has been set for is that tomorrow um let's see 23rd yes the third match of the evening will be oleg yano and tanahashi defending against kanamaru takahashi and evil so i if i recall correctly i don't know it's been a week but i believe those were the same guys that they defeated in the final so um yeah, this this road to actually when i was watching it and we should point out and this this is an important point um good show i enjoyed the show a lot i thought there were a lot of good um storylines kind of forwarded attendance was a little light uh one of the lighter attendances in several years where they did eight plus basically which 
typically they're over nine, usually in the thousand range for a cork and hall, which isn't great. I do wonder though, because I was trying to figure out, uh, I was, you know, seeing that they didn't do so well on this, um, show. And I was like, was it the card? Was it, I don't know, John Moxley, (laughs) (laughs) you know, I don't know. Um, could it be that tomorrow's show will do better because this is almost a road to road to like <laughs> everything on the show was almost a preview for tomorrow's show. Right. And you look at the main event. I mean, you have a, a cold, just five guys, uh, you know, none of the guys in there are really, you know, super top draws and really heated up right now. And then you have United empire who have been struggling to find their way and have been missing a little something with Osprey being gone. So you had two of the factions that are not the hottest right now, in the main event and yeah this car just kind of seemed a little i mean obviously there's good stuff and it's building up tomorrow and ultimately building up don taku but there wasn't like a bunch there's no tile defenses on here no you know naito's not in the main event shingo wrote like no lij main event so it's kind of, kind of one of those like am i going to spend my yen to go to this card or am i going to go tomorrow's car where there's five singles matches you know Hiro- right. hiromu and finley the main event the naito singles match like tomorrow's card looks way more appealing if i had to choose between one or the other right and that's kind of what i was thinking like because this almost feels like a road to tomorrow's road to um but again speaking on that house of torture they pick up the win building up some heat for their uh title challenge and we'll get to that here in a moment but like they could win those belts because it's the never titles and like they hop around you just never know Right, and one third of the champions is a young lion, um, which is extremely rare, and so that's an easy, you know, pin eater right there. Well, he's graduated apparently, but we know what the score is. This guy graduated but didn't go on excursion, which means it's one of them fake graduations. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, they're not graduating until the the, the 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 gimmick changes until there's new attire. Right, 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 right. There's no new attire. So this is basically, and even then, if if it only changes slightly, like this is basically Toa Hinari, you know, territory right now. Yeah. Um, one thing I did want to point out, though, I was totally believing that Oleg Bolton was about to pick up the win in this match. And if it wasn't for um, House Torture shenanigans down the tail stretch, he was going to pick up the win, which is kind of a big deal because he was very believably about to pick up the the victory in this match. Yeah. So, and maybe that's, that'll be the story going into the title match tomorrow. Maybe he does end up picking up the victory and is able to overcome shenanigans. Well, we see match layouts like this where like a junior guy is about to win or like a young line and then someone runs interference and like, you just kind of know they're not actually going to win and you're waiting for that interference. But in this specific inst- uh, instance, I don't remember who, who he had it might have been Ujura, i can't recall but or maybe it was Ke- i think it was kenamaru he had kenamaru and he was uh doing the the thing where he was um you know doing the gut wrench side to side and i was like oh he's gonna fucking beat kenamaru <laughs> he, he's a monster and he's beating up a junior like this is this is happening and then obviously they ran the interference and he ended up losing um which was another thing he got pinned by kenamaru right yeah. uh, it, it it is i was a little surprised by that because he is obviously he just graduated but he's a big guy you know and they had a uh, you know the master fucking heel or whatever you want to call him kenamaru like beat him but um it felt like if it hadn't have been for outside interference he was for sure beating kenamaru here which i i do think is a little bit telling to the idea that like they're going with this guy to some extent yeah we had a question from uh dr larry it says with narita getting big wins over suzuki zsj and taichi when do we consider him a made man since gato is intent on pushing sold out to the top and would it be out of the realm to think he's already an upper mid card guy um uh, he needs the track record you know what i mean and one thing that that works against him is that Almost all of those wins were uh, obtained through cheating methods. Obviously, that is the MO of House of Torture. So you can almost attribute those as like quasi clean wins because that's how they win. But at the same time, like 
you're not really a made guy if you're winning that way. If you can't win definitively with with one of your moves, then you're not really totally truly a made guy. And he's uh, like lower on the trajectory of the of the faction than Evil is, obviously. So he he, I would say he's like an upper mid card guy, but like you know, he's not that far from Will Hobbs. <laughs> <laughs> oh man you know, up, upper guy you know mid card guy i don't know you're just gonna upset all the fans today <laughs> i don't know i i, I I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and lie and tell you that like that i mean look at those wins he beat suzuki zack saber jr and taichi he cheated in all those matches right but you know what's funny about him getting a title shot he lost that tag match at, at Sakura Genesis. He got pinned clean by John Moxley. Yeah. So, I mean, I can't lie. Should he even be getting a title shot just because he came out? I mean, I know that's how it works in New Japan. You just come out and, and call your shot, but he did lose on a major show in a tag match t- to the current champion very recently. But, you know, he beat Suzuki, so... He beat Suzuki, so I guess that counts for something. <laughs> he beat the guy that's, you know, made his first appearance, you know, four months <laughs> into the year. Oh, bro, he doesn't work for New Japan anymore. Like, he's an outsider. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, moving on to the uh, semi-main event here. Uh, we had Bushi, Hiromu, Shingo, Naito, and Suji of LIJ that defeated the War Dogs team of Clark Connors, Dave Finley, Drilla, Maloney, Gabe, Kid, and Gato, 10 minutes and 25 seconds. Preview match for the singles matches that are occurring on road to the next day. Um, you know, Bull Club War Dogs, they attacked early um, as, as they're apt to do. And LIJ was able to pick up, pick up the victory here. Uh, kind of interesting because we're moving into a new territory here with LIJ and Bull Club War Dogs sort of, you know, facing off quite a bit. Um, the big match that is sort of on the horizon, obviously, is Suji and David Finley. And I it feels like it's uh, David Finley is the guy that's uh, more on the come up here. Yeah, and, and I feel that's going to be uh, a de facto number one contender match. I think the winner of that is going to get a shot at Dominion, possibly. Um, so that's going to be, I think, a very important match come Don Taku. But yeah, they're really heating it up. And I feel like. Yeah, with Finley coming back uh, from that um, injury that took him out of New Japan Cup, I think they're going to want to heat him back up and get him back in the mix. So, yeah, it's going to be a very important match for uh, both guys. And then also they were uh, building up the junior tag team title match. Uh, Drilla and Clark will be defending against Hiromu and Bushi. Uh, That'll be coming up. That should be a fun matchup as well. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, and then uh, Shingo will be defending the never open weight title against Gabe Kidd. So I'll see heating that up right there. And, you know, Gabe's had some comments, you know, talking about, you know, says, you know, the IWGP is trash now. Never is the real top title. Gabe Kidd is not just making those kayfabe comments. He's like he's working a fucking gimmick online. He's calling it Rocky. He's calling out Tanahashi. He's calling out TK. Like he's he's talking that shit and and it's driving people into a fervor. Um, and I don't know, like, is he allowed to do this? Is he not allowed to do this? It, it's hard to tell, honestly. It's it's Brian Pillman type shit. Well, he's the madman, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, moving on to the main event, we had a faction warfare gauntlet match with the United Empire versus just five guys and. The United Empire ended up defeating just five guys here. So the match started up. We had a uh, great Okan and Yuya Uomura were the first two from each team. And these guys have a KOPW title match coming up, which you would think that since they're kind of the main two in the feud here, that they would have um, had these guys be the last two guys for the team here. But they were actually the first two. With uh, the KOPW provisional title match coming up, and they ended up wrestling to a 10 minute time limit draw. There was a, a lot of uh, grappling here, and it, it seemed like uh, Uomura was trying to 
out wrestle and out grapple great Okan, which we know Okan's uh you know grappling history and, and judo background and uh he just wasn't getting it done and towards the end you know after the time limit uh great Okan, you know threw him down one more time and, and had control and you know uomura we'll talk about it here in a second he did uh his stipulation that he was trying to propose more of a kind of a catch style rules more of a, a grappling kind of base maneuver here so he's trying to prove that he's a better grappler than Ocon. also his tip didn't win and Ocon was showing that he was the uh, kind of superior grappler here in this uh first 10 minutes of the match yeah um obviously and i guess we'll talk about that here in a little bit but you know which of the two stipulations i was going for <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man but um yeah, it was interesting to kind of see these two guys really kind of go into more of a folk style, catch style, Greco Roman sort of uh, just catch base match. Um, but then towards the tail end of it, and they're on the outside, things really started to break down. And uh, Great Ocon like started to use the or planned to use the table that is going to obviously play a big part into the third fall of the Hiroshima Royal revitalization match that they have coming up for, for KOPW. And um, uh, Mikey Nichols was on the call here with Chris Charlton. He was hilarious. And he was like, I think that might be the first because they, they went to the time limit. He's like, I think that might be the first time that a table was set up in a wrestling match and it wasn't used. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then so after that, so they they wrestled to a ten limit ten limit time limit draw. So they they were both eliminated. Out next for United Empire, we had Jeff Cobb and then Sonata. Uh, and they also wrestled to a ten minute time limit draw. They brawled uh, towards the outside in the stands of Corkin. There was a, a very near uh, double count out as they were up in the stands, and then both men had to sprint down. Cobb like tripped <laughs> on the way to the ring. Cobb trying to run was hilarious and then like the faux worked I don't even know maybe it was real but it, it seemed like a worked trip it was so fucking funny and like I thought I thought he was going to trip and not make it and like lose the fall based on that it was it was so great yeah so um and Cobb you know he he did a uh he called it a O'Cobber roll <laughs> um, Bro, he didn't bridge at all he just fucking laid all his weight on the t- <laughs> So funny. Yeah, so uh good stuff there. So yeah, another 10 minute time limit draw. Then out next we had the Prince of Pace, Callum Newman and Taka Michinoku from Just Five Guys. And Callum Newman gets the uh big pin over the legend, Taka Michinoku. Um not totally unexpected because Taka is like the pin eater for just five guys and all that. But um and he's a junior, and I guess Callum at this point is technically like a heavyweight, but first big win in any sort of singles capacity in Cork and Hall for Callum Newman, a guy that seems to be all in on the company and that they seem to be very high on. So uh, somewhat historic, actually, and a uh, good action, too. Yeah, really uh, fast-paced stuff there. Newman getting the win, and then... Out from the Just Five Guys team, we had Doki, who's going to be challenging show next Monday for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title. So they come out, have some good action, and uh, Doki gets the submission victory, hits the um, Italian stretch 32, submits Callum Newman. Uh, this is something I want to point out, Jeremy. Why is the move called a stretch if it's a choke? It's not a choke. <laughs> it, it's not a choke. They, they, they called it the Doki Chokey, but the, the, the Japanese commentary do not call it the Doki Chokey. And I doubt Doki calls it the Doki Chokey. That, that shit's a stretch. It's a double arm bar. It's not a choke. They think that they're choke. They think that they're, it's, it's a wind choke. It's yeah. Not. Because the feet are like crossing. Because the, because the feet are crossing over the face. It's not, it's a double arm bar. He's, he's bridging up and he's breaking the dude's arms and like at this point they can't get away from it because they've they've made so much of a a gimmick out of calling it the doki you know the doki jokey kevin and all that shit but like it's it's the italian stretch it's a fucking double arm bar yeah 
And uh, he, I think Doki called it Doki Choki that one time where uh, Gino was on commentary. He didn't do it. He was like, no Doki Choki tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Even if he calls it that, it's not an actual chokehold. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I just feel sad for, you know, those fans that are not listening to keeping a strong style to get, you know, educated who think that it's a chokehold. It's clearly not a chokehold. It's not a choke. It's not a choke. Uh, so then uh, after that, we had uh, Francesco Akira coming out from the United Empire and some great back and forth action here. And uh, Doki once again gets a victory. So Doki putting away two of uh, the United Empire uh, members here. That's building up some momentum going into that title match next week. Yeah, yeah you want to talk about, you know, fucking, you know, Ishimori is picking up some steam. My dog Doki <laughs> is picking up some serious steam. Two wins. Two wins back to back over over different men, a heavyweight and a junior in the same night. That's my dog for real. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so Doki gets a win there, and then we had TJP coming out. So TJP comes in and he ends up pinning Doki, um, eliminates him, which then uh, brings out the last guy from Just Five Guys, Tai Chi. And uh, TJP, you know, Taichi was checking on Doki. TJP uh, plancha from there and was really uh, very aggressive here in the match. Uh, you know, the Corkin crowd was very behind. TJP kind of the underdog in the situation, being a junior and Taichi being a heavyweight. And uh, TJP ends up getting, you know, the tight, small package on Taichi towards the end. One, two, three. TJP, he defeats Taichi. Yeah, TJP was wrestling with a lot of urgency here. He hit the uh, Mamba Splash early on. He had him in, uh, I don't know what he calls it, but his um, STF variant, which he nearly tapped out uh, Tai Chi with that. So he was really like pulling out all the stops to prove a point here and plays into the storyline that's been kind of going on with him trying to declare himself the captain of the team and kind of getting browbeaten and just dressed down publicly by both Jeff Cobb as well as Great Ocon over the past few weeks where they were like, we keep fucking losing. You're you're supposed to be the captain. Like, And um, Great Ocon made a comment, and he's like, the next time you go fishing, you better catch a big one. Otherwise, like, it could be like lights out for you. It could <laughs> be done. You know, done, son. Yeah. And um, he, he was wrestling with urgency. Now, I'm a little bit, um, you know, I want to go too deep in the weeds with the story stuff. I'm not, uh, you know, um, the guys from WeWork stiff. So, you know, I'm not going to do the whole character motivations and the whole breakdown, but we've been sort of living with this story for the past month or so, ever since Will Ospreay left, where it's like, what is the future of this team? And what's going on with TJP, where he's like consistently calling himself the captain and then got kind of put in place but now it's all culminated into this match which was in my opinion of the of the recent modern um gauntlet style matches like the one we saw who was in that other it was just five guys versus LIJ. lj yeah i thought this one was much better personally i thought the work was just a, a more crisp and and a little bit faster paced um i'm wondering if this is the end of it because at the in the post show, you had um, Great Ocon kind of give his approval to TJP, where they were like, you know, they they basically came to a. And did you watch the post show? So I watched uh, TJP's promo post match, and you know he kind of he grabbed the mic and was kind of taking that captain role, and he said, you know, United Empire. There were all leaders, but there's one captain. I'm the captain. And he was like, um, you know, Ocon, you need to retain KOPW. Cobb, you need to win the, the world TV title. Newman, you need to enter G1. And then catch 2 2. We're going to, one of us is going to win Best Super Juniors. Right. Um, so it's sort of like a bit of a compromise because everyone was like, there is no leader. And then he's like, you're right. There's no leader. We're all leaders, but I'm the captain. And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like yeah you're the captain um but he he got dressed down last week and now after this big win he's the captain and i'm like okay 
is this leading somewhere? Is he about to win best of the super juniors or is this just one of those weird things where it's like, they don't have any creative for, for, <laughs> for, for United empire. So they're finding some creative for themselves as they kind of just get booked. And as new Japan just tries, you know, because like, again, like I said, like, if you want storyline stuff, go to WeWork stiff. They'll 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 get, do all the ins and outs. But I'm thinking more conspiratorially. I'm like, are they just trying to sell all the the rest of the fucking United Empire merch that they have before they disband this shit? And in the meantime, they're just like trying to keep the intrigue alive. Like, is that what's happening, or do they have real plans here? And is TJP about to win Super Juniors? Yeah, maybe that is a push. I mean, he he beat. A heavyweight here in Tai Chi and so yeah maybe that is going to set him up to win his block and if they do you know semifinals again yeah win that and yeah, end up winning the finals and giving him a, a big push and going towards a, the junior title if this doesn't lead to anything then we're going to be very vindicated about how shittily we talked about this whole thing last week where we got asked a question about this and I was like if you can't see TJP winning the IWGP title, he can't be the leader of a faction. And I felt very confident about that. But now this week, you got him out there beating Tai Chi, got him out there like redeeming the group. They're calling him the captain. And I'm like, okay, if they turn around and the the and the end of this all is him winning, um, you know, like the junior title or winning super juniors. I'll kind of have to walk back a lot of that, you know, very uh, opinionated shit I said last week. And and maybe that's where we're going. But I, I still don't have the it's hard for me to imagine that that's what's happening. Yeah. But I mean, even if he does win the junior title and best super juniors, I mean, I, it's, it's still it's still not Will Ospreay. <laughs> it's, still not, it's still not Will Ospreay. <laughs> we just had one of the greatest matches in the history of North America last night. <laughs> yeah. It, it, this, this whole thing, it kind of feels like that in between, between Fergal Devitt and AJ Styles, where Carl Anderson was quote unquote the but there, leader. Well, there really wasn't because they were, they wrestled on the same night. Yeah. The last night of, of, Devitt's run was the first night of AJ's run, and he won the title like that same night. Yes. Like it's kind of been this thing. People say that where they're like, there was this image. There really was not an in-between period. They, they were like at the same time. They just never appeared on screen together. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see what they end up doing here. So, yeah, so that, we'll that wraps up um, that road to wrestling Don Taku. Uh, and there's a, another road to wrestling Don Taku by the time you guys are hearing this. It's probably what have already aired coming up uh, April 23rd, also in Cork and hall. So we have uh, Shoma Kato and Bishamon. They'll be taking on Ishimori Owens and Kenta. So once again, a preview for the tag titles and I'm sure Ishimori is going to pick up uh, another win there. Uh, and then we have a multi-man match after that. Uh, Put money on Kato. <laughs> uh, who, who knows? You know, Young Lions are, are they're winning belts now. Um. <laughs> when they're white. <laughs> 2024, the year of the white man in New Japan, you know? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, we have a uh, a multi man match here. Taguchi's average was in the match, but uh, he got injured, and we'll talk about that during the news. So he's going to be replaced, but uh, it'll be his replacement: Despi, ELP, and Hikaleo taking on uh, Fujita, Haste, Nichols, and ZSJ from TMDK. Then we'll one, have one thing. While you're, I know I, I keep interrupting you, but it's funny. Nobody seemed to mention the fact that Nick Nemeth, the current global champion, a white man lost a moose last night in TNA for the TNA title and how that devalues the global title. Mm. <laughs> how many people do you think even know that that match actually happened? It happened. <laughs> and, and I'm not a fan of it. You know, I don't like the idea of moose, a black man beating Nick Nemeth, the white man. <laughs> 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 uh. 
I just don't like the way the uh, the global title is being devalued right now. I don't like the way that the global title is being devalued because Moose defeated Nick Nemeth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, Anthem Sports, they're, they're bullying New Japan. Uh, you know, they're using their influence and this partnership. It's, it's a sick. It, it, but you know what? It is a bad look when the global champion loses to TNA's top champion. It is, yeah. I, honestly, I think that that's worse. Then it's, no, it's not <laughs> worse. <laughs> so, uh, third match of the evening never open weight six man championship match Bolton Oleg, Toriano, Hiroshi Tanahashi defending against Kanamaru, Yujiro, and Evil from House of Torture. Kanamaru, there's a job to do. <laughs> uh, we'll see. I mean, I think the most the more interesting thing would, would be to have. Uh, Bolton, Tana, and Yano retain. Um, funny thing was last week we didn't mention how like they wore the uh, I don't know what the jackets are called, but like from the the jacket, the, the gimmick jackets that they've worn in the past when Yano the, uh, and Tana team Hops bebop was, jacket. Yeah, team. See, I wanted to say bebop, but I was thinking of like cowboy bebop, and I was like, that can't possibly be right. Like, <laughs> I don't want to get my animes and my mangas mixed up. You know, it's it's not. You know, culturally sensitive, but uh, they put old uh, Bolton Oleg in one of those jackets, and like he was fucking, he looked like Chris Farley in in Tommy Boy, you know, fat man, man in a little, little coat. coat, yeah. So they said the next time they're gonna get him an appropriate jacket. <laughs> yeah, I think they should just leave him with that jacket. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Uh. So moving on to the next matchup. Uh, well, so you're thinking that they're going to retain? I, I don't know, but yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm going to go with them retaining. But, but if they switch it, they could easily switch it. It's the never titles. And they can switch yeah. it right back. Like they can play hot potato with this thing. I know that we've lived through some periods where we've had some incredible title defense records and some incredible champions. But guys, it's the never title. And it could just be like... Just like that. Yeah, like, yeah. One and done, back and forth. You know, you, you give Bolton, you know, a little bit of a, a highlight uh, winning the title. But then, yeah, you, you drop him right back out. Yep. So uh, moving on to the next matchup. It'll be the start of the uh, series of singles matches between Los Ingobernables de Japón and the Bullet Club War Dogs. So first, we'll have the Gene Blast, Yota Suji taking on Gato. Oh, this has got Gato written all over it. You know what I'm saying? He's the booker, so he's probably going to book himself to win this match. So <laughs> going with Gato. <laughs> no reason he should lose. If if he loses, he's the worst booker there ever was. Because if I was booker and a wrestler, I would Vern Ganya that shit and make myself the champion forever. Well, I, I was a, a backyard booker and backyard wrestler, and I did make myself you made yourself a champion. <laughs> the world champion. You were the top star. <laughs> so that, that, that just l- lends more credence to what I'm saying. It should be ghetto. <laughs> Fuck you, Suji. <laughs> what, what, if, what if Gale did walk up to him and was like, <laughs> there's a job to do. <laughs> You're looking at the lights, pal. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Suji's going to gene blast this dude. There's going to be jeans blasted all over the arena. Yes. Cork and all. Just jeans everywhere. <laughs> then following that, we will have Bushi taking on Gabe Kidd. Um, Bushi's been on a roll, but... <laughs> I find it hard to believe that he's going to beat Gabe Kidd here. Gabe Kidd's going to beat the brakes off this man. Yeah, especially with uh, Gabe uh, challenging for narrow title. Yeah, I see uh, uh, this man Bushi getting jacked up in this match. Uh, then yep. Following that, we will have Shingo Takagi taking on the Wild Rhino Clark Connors. Um, I'm going with Shingo. You know, I could see some sort of schmoz thing happening here, though. You know what I mean? Like with Bullet Club and everything. Like I don't know. I'm 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 getting my my spidey senses are starting to go off a little bit. Yeah, I feel like especially with the the Gabe Kid match being right before the Shingo match, I feel we can get the Heyman kind of special here. Angle alert. 
yeah, those two matches bleed into each other, and then somehow um, Gabe could cost Shingo the match against Clark. I wouldn't be, you know what? Bold prediction here. I would actually, I know we made fun, but what if Bushi and Clark Connors pick up the win because some bullshit goes down between Shingo and, and uh, Gabe? That's possible. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't beat Gabe. I, I'd be, I mean, I'm fine with Shingo getting pinned because then you could do Shingo versus Clark in a title match and have him defend never title against a junior. Uh, I doubt that's uh, he's a junior. They're not going to do an open weight <laughs> title match with the junior. Yeah. God, what do you think this is? 2015 New Japan? Like, come on. But I, but I feel like Connors has to win due to the the fall in two matches. Uh, so the semi main event we have Tetsuya Naito against Drilla Maloney, and then the main event is Hiromu Takahashi against David Finley. Both of those matches sound very intriguing, very interesting. Um. Because Maloney works so hard. I feel like, is Naito going to get up for that match or not? Nah? You know what I mean? Like, is yeah. he just going to, like, lock this guy into, like, neck cranks and leg locks all night? Or is Maloney going to be like, fuck that, we're working? Naito's, um, Naito's just going to spit at him for 10 minutes. I, yeah, Naito's going to spit a lot. But I wonder how many bumps he's going to take. I feel like Maloney might, like, push him to work. And then um, Hiromu's already been on the downslide with you know, the storyline of failing and losing the Finley match is going to be another big loss for him, but that should be a really good main event, honestly. Yeah. And so, I mean, it feels like the, the Finley match is the only one for sure where it's clearly in the war dogs favor. So I feel like, uh, so Gabe kid would win. And then I think Connor's win. It's definitely being Maloney though. Right. Yeah. Nigel's being Maloney. So I think, Connor's pulling the upset on Chingo, so you have the War Dogs go three or two and win the series. The only the only two that I feel like are a little bit iffy are Bushi, Gabe Kid, and Chingo and Connors. The other three I feel like are open and shut. Suji's beating Kid, Naito's beating Maloney, and Hiromu's losing to Finley. Yeah. So, yeah. so very interesting stuff. But this is fun. We we don't get a lot of this this many singles matches on one night. It, it it feels like I remember years ago when Bullet Club when there was just one Bullet Club. <laughs> <laughs> the only one existed. Um I remember when Bullet Club did a series of matches against Chaos and it was five singles matches like this. And that was like in 2018. It's been a long time since something like this has happened it feels like. Yeah, we've, we've seen a lot more. It seems like more intent in the, the faction warfare because, you know, we saw LIJ, United Empire Empire had a similar, you know, faction warfare gauntlet and si- similar singles matches. So, yeah, we're getting a little bit more um, singles action here with these faction uh, feuds. So then nice. that, that will take us to uh, April 27th. We'll have another Road 2 show from uh, Hiroshima Sun Plaza Hall. We're going to have a frontier zone with uh, Bolton, Oleg, and Yano taking on Ray, Paloma, and Hanzo. Uh, oh, Hanzo, he's going to fuck them up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see if I can figure out uh, what promotion these guys are from. Doesn't matter. They're just drifters. They walk the earth, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not sure where they're from, but yeah. So. I don't know. I have no fucking clue who these guys are. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Frontier Zone, get into it. Uh, following that, Tiger Mask and Bishamon. House, Hanzo. <laughs> uh, Tiger Mask and Bishamon will take on uh, Ishimori, Owens, and Kenta. So again, another tag that will preview there. Um, then we'll have Vegeta and ZSJ taking on uh, Francesco Akira and Jeff Cobb. So preview for the TV title match there. Then uh, Despi, Ishii, and Umino taking on Nujiro, Narita, and Evil. Hanuma and Tanahashi taking on Taichi and Sonata. We'll have Taka and Doki taking on Kanamaru and Sho. And then we'll have the strong openweight tag team championship match, TMDK, defending against ELP and Hikaleo. Kind of talked about this earlier, but what do you think, Ori? Old champs, new I, I- champs. <laughs> Old champs, <laughs> new champs. <laughs> I don't think we're going to see new champions here. Um, 
if if we did, I feel like that'd be very disrespectful to TMDK, <laughs> who have struggled for years and years to win any kind of gold in this in this company. So they should retain. Yeah, they should. Um, I feel like it's, again, that'd be very hot potato to have them yeah, just bounce it back to God. Uh, following that, we will have the KOPW 2024 Provisional Championship match. Uh, as the Great Ocon defends against Iga Uemura, and so we had the stipulations come out last week in the vote, and you know Ocon proposed another rural revitalization match uh, with the in Hiroshima. Yes, in Hiroshima, it's uh, different. <laughs> And Uemura proposed a catch rules match. So Uemura wanted a 61-minute time limit, best of three falls, catch rules, no strikes, grapples, throws, and submissions, only pinfall or submission. And then Okan's rural revitalization in Hiroshima, no time limit, best two out of three falls, first fall, Mazda tire carrying contest, second fall, Hiroshima lemon eating contest, and then the third fall, Will be the table match, and Josh, I'm excited to let you know that the Great Ocon has won. We get another rural revitalization match. It's I on. think the the voting was really close on this, right? It was the last time I checked. It was like neck and neck, uh, at least on the um, the English poll. I'm not sure how the Japanese poll went. Ah, uh, the domestic fan. <laughs> uh. Can I say something kind of controversial on this show? Sure, why not? (laughs) While I think it's important that, yes, we should respect and understand and have perspective about the idea that this is a Japanese company and it's targeted and marketed towards a domestic Japanese crowd. At the end of the day, I don't give a fuck about what Japanese people want to watch when it comes to this shit. <laughs> oh <boy. laughs> because what does it matter to me? Because at the end of the day, I still want to see the baller shit. And it doesn't matter to me whether what they're marketing or what they're proposing or booking appeals to a foreign fan base if it's not good. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this is a prime example of that. Like, I don't know a hundred percent if like the Japanese audience was the swing vote on this, but I kind of have a, a <laughs> sneak, some suspicion that it was because Great Ocon is very popular and this gimmick is kind of getting over. But like, bro, you and more as a guy that we kind of see as being like ace potential for this company. And this isn't going to be like the death knell for him or anything like that. But like at first, the idea of him being involved in a title picture with great Ocon, I was like, okay, that's not a, a month ago when, when, when we were getting rural revitalization rules and it was Tamata or Tangaloa against great Ocon. I was like, this is hilarious. I, I'm, I'm, I, I couldn't care less how terrible this is because it's Tangaloa. You know, Mm -hmm. but but when it's you, Amora, I'm like, oh shit. Like once it starts (laughs) sinking in that we're going to see you, Amora eating lemons and carrying tires and, and all that. And then like doing a table match. I'm like, fuck bro. Like this is terrible. (laughs) (laughs) And, And it's not fun. Like it's not fun in a good way. Like it's just flat out bad. And I can under I know what the the response is going to be. It's going to be like, well, the Japanese fans voted for it, and like to some extent, I understand. Like, this is a show for them, but it's also a show for me. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing about that? It wasn't a joke. It's for me. <laughs> Book. For- <laughs> <laughs> and like. Do I do I necessarily want to see a catch rules match? No, but if I had to choose between a catch rules match and a lemon eating contest, like look, look, lemon is one of my favorite things to eat in the world. But I don't want to fucking sit there for ten minutes and watch these dudes eat as many lemons as they can. That that screams to me, twenty ten NXT 
you know, when it was a game show before it was a developmental brand, when these guys were like doing the, uh, yeah, the uh, keg carrying contest or whatever. That was just one example of the many weird ass things that WWE made these guys do on TV. They had Daniel Bryan doing game show esque shit in 2010 <laughs> <laughs> on USA Network. Um, you and more should not be eating goiza or carrying tires or, you know, eating lemons. And this just sucks. Like, I don't see it. Even if he wins, let's say best case scenario, he eats all the lemons. He wins the second fall and he ends up putting uh great Ocon through a table. How is this going to help him? This is not, this is not your 2022 KOPW title that was held by the likes of, of Shingo and Taichi. Great Ocon has made this shit his own. And 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 dare I say, it is worse than Yano's KOPW. Yeah. <laughs> and man, yeah, I don't know what they're doing with Uemura. Uh, you know, he, he lost the hair. I thought that was going to be a reset. He was picking up all these wins and then lose the tag title match. And now he has this wacky KOPW match. His hair is like growing back in and it's kind of red. And he just, he just, I don't know. Just, nah, don't talk shit about my, my dog. He looks good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm guessing Ocon's gonna retain. It doesn't matter who wins. I don't care because they're <laughs> eating lemons and they're carrying tires, bro. And, and sure, it might be entertaining. But this is Vince McMahonism. A ra- the number one fan for this shit would be a rapist. <laughs> this is his idea for what would be good wrestling. Yeah. So moving on. <laughs> it sucks. It sucks. Uh, the main event will be uh, an elimination match. Bushi, Hiromu, Suji, Shingo, and Naito, L.I.J., First the War Dogs, Gato, Drilla, Connors, Kid, and Finley. I don't know who's going to win there, but that sounds pretty awesome, actually. And one thing we should talk about: uh, Finley has been alluding to the idea of a new War Dog coming into the company, and whoever that individual is that he's been alluding to, they seem to have an issue with Tetsuya Naito. Could it be somebody who used to do this symbol? Oh, uh, what's his face? Uh, from uh, Noah. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I'm blanking on his name right now. He was in Nakajima. Kong. Yeah, Nakajima. Could Nakajima be coming in as a war dog to take on Tetsuya Naito? That could be they interesting. Yeah. I don't know that that's the case, but like he seems to be hinting that way. Yeah, I mean, I, that's the only other person I can really think of outside New Japan that has an issue with Naito. Well, it could be Rich Latta. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Rich has been hanging out with Swerve a lot. You know, maybe they've been secretly training. And this man rolls out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Rich God. Latta. <laughs> oh. Lata O. Rich Lata O. <laughs> oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh. So yeah. See, this was fucking funny, bro. Yeah, just wait till y'all can watch this on video. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. See anyone that's looking at the the background and they see our logo, they think that that's uh, you know Okada. That they're wrong. That's Raven. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all thought it was Okada this whole time. It's been Raven this whole time. It's been worse. <laughs> Quote the Raven. Nevermore. Oh. Yo, how funny last night was it when they went to go do the the Rainmaker pose and this dude put up his mouth. <laughs> I, I felt like he was pointing that finger at us. Yeah, I felt like that was specifically for Kiss. Like, uh, you bitches. <laughs> I took that personally. Uh, us and Okada shorts. 
Oh, man. FKA Okada shorts. Yeah, they're not what the Ichiban uh, sweet sweet cast. Sweet cast, yeah. yeah. Okay, before we move on to the next show, one thing I I just want to bring up because it, it popped into my mind. What's up with One Nation Radio and them trying to rag on us about our logo and then doing the 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 John Moxley shit? Well, I guess apparently they they just really want us to change the logo. And why was why was their versions of the John Moxley version of our logo so hard? And why do I want to change it to that? I know. I, I did think about just changing the, the Twitter uh, profile. <laughs> uh, Yo, it'd be, it'd be funny. Like, we, we, we joked about it, like, changing the logo. Like, what if we turned our logo into, like, a WWE championship side plate and every time a new champion emerges in new japan we just change the the silhouette to them um and then friend of the show peeling back the curtain zach porter he is actually the designer of our logo and he was like well you gentlemen know where to find me and i was like you're gonna do this every time there's a new champion and then he just didn't respond he went completely silent on the, on the <laughs> uh. so i i don't know if he's down I'm sure he would be. I'm sure he would be. I would. I. This is not a. This. Maybe. Maybe once the the fucking um. Uh. What What are we moving to? What for? Uh. The videos for video be- and all that and the tears and ev- all the shit that you're doing. Yeah. Well, I guess I should just talk about it now since you mentioned it. Yeah. So we're um. <laughs> we're doing. We're launching a Patreon. Um, oh, that's what's called Patreon. Yeah. Yeah. So the 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 live weekly video will be one of the tiers uh, on the Patreon. Maybe once we move to Patreon, we can throw some cash Zach's way. Yeah, we and can still take something like that. But one thing I'm I'm telling you guys right now, I'm not changing this background. Yeah, we see uh, we we spent uh, good hard earned money. Uh, on this logo, or on this backdrop right here, with this man doing the Rainmaker pose. That was such a mistake. <laughs> Anyways, I'll I'll do the quick rundown. So, Wrestling Satsumi no Kuni, April 29th in Kagoshima. We've got eight matches announced. Shoma Kato versus Katsuya Murashima. I have the feeling, Jeremy, we might get the first finish in a singles match between these guys. Maybe, yeah. Second match of the night, Bolton Oleg, Tiger Mask, Makabe, and Tanahashi. They take on the team of Taka, Uemura, Taichi, and Sonata. Third match of the night, Fujita, Hayes, Nichols, and ZSJ. Take on the team of Newman, Akira, Okan, and Cobb. Fourth match of the night, Jado, Despe, Umino, ELP, and Hikaleo take on Togo, Kenamaru, Yujiro, Narita, and Evil. Fifth match of the night, Taguchi and Bishamon versus Ishimori, Kenta, and Chase Owens. Sixth match of the night, Suji, Shingo, and Naito versus Gato, Kid, and Finley. And then your semi-main event, the IWGP Junior Tag Team Championship is on the line as the Bull Club War Dogs defend against uh, LIJ's Bushi and Hiromu. And then your main event, the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title is on the line as show defends against Doki who is the current physical holder of the IWGP junior heavyweight title. Yeah. So uh junior is taking the spotlight here for the last two matches. Um, I feel like the war dogs are going to retain. I don't know. I feel like they're building up a lot of momentum for those guys right now. Um, I mean, I don't know who else would actually beat them, but I feel like Hiromu and Bushi never win these tech title matches. But maybe now's the perfect time for them to win the title since they've never held them, even though I think mistakenly in the past we've been like, yeah, they've held these titles and they <laughs> never have. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like they, they would have by now. Um, no, uh, Hiromu keeps losing, so he he's probably going to. But Bushi keeps winning. Yeah, but. One of them is a bigger star, and that's Hiromu, and he's the bigger liability. So he's holding Bushi back at this point. In 2024, Hiromu Takahashi is holding back Bushi. 
and and Bushi needs to figure that out and cut off this toxic relationship. Yeah, and uh, you know Clark and Drilla they just signed new contracts. This could be part of their push. So I think they were taking they probably it. signed it into their contract the same way Nick Nemeth did, the same way Matt Riddle did. <laughs> 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 no, no, these white men manipulative. <laughs> so these white men manipulative. <laughs> Anyways, show versus Doki. So, which one of these guys do you think can uh, semi main event? <laughs> Look, there's no way that Doki nor show headlines more than like one or two nights of super juniors so either way the question you got to ask yourself which of these guys can feasibly handle being the semi-main event on an a or b block for the for 10 nights i feel like from a work rate standpoint i would go with doki somebody who would actually have good matches but i feel but i think it's show yeah, I feel like from a fan interaction, as far as you know, where they at, kind of level wise. <laughs> uh, you know, I feel like Show's also the more established guy, and how the tortures uh, established faction. So yeah, I, I think Show's winning. Yeah, I agree. I'm not happy about it, but I think Show is going to retain here. Um, I'll be glad once we move on from the idea that show stole the title before he was champion, then he won the championship and then yo stole it. And then after yo stole it, Doki stole it. And I'm just tired of the idea of stolen championships in new Japan, because this is all coming on the tails of evil stealing the IWGP heavyweight title in uh, November of last year. So what can we just not, we we we've, we've done this for a while now and it's just not working so let's move on but yeah i think show's going to retain the title doki loses and we're off to super juniors can't wait <laughs> well that is going to do it for the preview so we've got three shows coming up between now and next week so let's jump into the news we got quite a few news items so um the biggest news item of the week Ryuzuki Taguchi has been pulled from upcoming shows. Gasp. Due to injuries <laughs> sustained in a bicycle accident. I'm sure it was ass related personally. <laughs> this is a cover up. Yeah. It was announced that Taguchi suffered wounds to his face, hands, and knees in the accident, along with injuries uh, injuring his neck. Oh, that sounds terrible. I didn't know all this. <laughs> Uh, because of that, he'll no longer be competing at New Japan's events that are taking place between April 20th and May 4th. Most of the show- shows are on the road to Wrestling Dantaku Tour. Taguchi is also missing Wrestling Setsumi no Kuni. And both nights are Wrestling Dantaku 2024. We did surprisingly have a question related to this. Death Triangle 720 said, With Yo's injury and the recent event of Taguchi, who should Taguchi spot? Who should take Taguchi's spot in the tournament? Yeah, interesting uh, question there. I don't know. I feel like, why isn't Callum Newman in this tournament? I, I know they're kind of pushing him as a heavyweight. He's a heavyweight. He's a prince he's of pace. Big. He's a big man. I don't know. He, he's still a little light. Nah. <laughs> I I don't know why Musashi's not in this. It could be him. Or the guy that just beat Hiromu in Chicago. Mustafa Ali, yeah, I, like I said in the Discord, it's going to be hard to get him involved with all the belts that he has and the winning streaks. and Yeah, so we'll see. One thing, oh, one thing I, I forgot to mention. I, I said earlier that Chris Charlton did an incredible job talking about the kayfabe reasons uh, or like the, the storyline with uh, Will Hobbs and John Boxley, and he was like, yeah, our backstage staff is freaking out. We're trying to get uh we're trying to get visas for Will Hobbs in case he wins. <laughs> <laughs> it's like and and the uh the graphics team is scrambling. <laughs> what a what a way to sell 
the idea that this guy might be the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion come Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. (laughs) New Japan has revealed that Yo's injury replacement uh, for the best of the Super Juniors 31 tournament in a social media post early Friday. Two-time BOSJ winner Kushida was revealed as the substitute for the injured Yo. We had a few questions here from uh, Copper Squire. He said, during last year's Best of Super Juniors, many thought Kushida's losing streak might lead to a heel run, but that went nowhere. Could doing an angle during the tourney where Kushida finally turns to the dark side bring new life to a junior division, which desperately needs something fresh? I mean... Here's the thing. I feel like New Japan's kind of done with Kushida. I I, I don't think we're do. like we're not getting any like, creative plans. Like there 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 were plans when he came back and he was you know the missing puzzle of the junior division. He was going to probably be in that four way Wrestle Kingdom, but then since then it's been like losing streak. Super Juniors last year, quick title mat, quick title change with uh, Jet Setters. It's like. They have not been pushing. They've been not treating this guy like he was the former ace of the junior division. Bro, you know what happened? I'll tell you exactly what happened if you want to know. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dato found out that dude had hand, mouth, and foot disease, and he said, "Ew, <laughs> you nasty." <laughs> Bro, we're done with you. <laughs> you had what? <laughs> Fucking what? Your disease, bro. Nah, bro. You think you're gonna be world champion ever ever again? Like junior champion? Nah, bro. You had you had a hand, mouth, and foot disease. That's it. We're done with you. New <laughs> Japan doesn't fuck with that shit. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't I don't think there's any heel turn. I don't think there's gonna be any creative plans for him. Like he's he's literally coming in to fill a spot because yo got hurt. And he's probably going to eat a bunch of losses in this tournament again. Dark Dark Soldier asked, do you think there's hope for Kushida in the future to challenge and win at least the Never title? There's still value to him on the product and do something meaningful outside of junior stuff. I don't know. Is there still value for Kushida? Um, it's Bro, not- I, I love Kushida personally. I'm a big, big fan, but like... Nah. Yeah, it's like he came back. They didn't like pop numbers. There wasn't like this huge draw of people coming to see him. Um, yeah, I like Kushida too. He's a great wrestler and also, you know, former ace of junior division. Um, you know, will go down as one of the best juniors in New Japan. But, you know, he's, he's older. Um, you know, he's been away from the product. They are not treating him like a top star. They are not pushing him like he's a legend. They are treating him the same way they're treating, you know, any random junior. They're treating him like Ace Austin or Chris Bay, like some random, you know, dude that's coming in from Impact. You know, one mistake that I've made personally year over year is continuously thinking that they're going to book Kushida stronger in a Super Juniors than they they have. And last year really gave home the idea that like, nah, they're they're done with this guy. Um, we, we done with Kushida. <laughs> yeah, we, we moved on from Kushida. You know, one thing a lot of people don't realize, Kushida challenged for the Never title in 2014 when the champion was Tomohiro Ishii a decade ago. Tomohiro Ishii was the Never champion t- 10 years ago. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Kushida challenged for that title. Do I think that it would I love the idea of a junior challenging or even winning that title, sure. But their names would probably be Hiromu Takahashi or Desperado, not not Kushida. Not and the missing puzzle piece. That man went to go work for Triple H. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the game. Uh. That man went to go work for the game. Uh. So, um, that man was uh, trying to be a part of the Paul Levesque era. And, and you know what? I'm just going to peel back the curtain a little bit more. When's the last time you saw Kushida work a match where he wasn't just fucking working the arm anyways? <laughs> <laughs> Has this guy tried in like the last six years? I don't even know, bro. Like he's just working the fucking arm, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, 
let's move on. Um, a stardom tag match is the latest addition to the all. Alt- oh, a, a women's match. Great. No, I'm just playing. Uh, a stardom tag match is the latest addition to the all together show for 2024. Azumi and Mio Amasaki versus Starlight Kid and Natsupoi. It's going to take place on Monday, May the 6th event. Oh, one thing I should let everybody know. I, f- I was going to mention this last week. M- remember a few weeks ago where I was like, hey, I got this job that's upcoming. And if I get it, it might change things. Well, I got that shit. <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, you, you posted it in the, the Discord and um, on Facebook. Yeah, congrats. So, so I am now. And the reason I was reminded May 6th is my first day as a financial advisor. So hopefully I know how to advise people financially. So uh, can the listeners call you up and, and get some advice? No, that's not <laughs> how it works. <laughs> can, but, uh, can we set up a Patreon tier where if they subscribe, they can be eligible to get. If if you want to go to jail, then yes, that's how <laughs> that shit. But I don't think the SEC fucks with that sort of shit. So no. Um also, CMLL, they're doing a Fantastic Mania show in June at Arena Mexico. As things stand, several New Japan stars will be headed in, as well as the debut of non-New Japan stars. And that is going to do it for the news. And we got some questions, and we're uh, going to do Match of the Week and get out of here. I know we got a lot of questions because we skipped it last week. Yeah, so we'll uh, power through these. We got, we got about an hour that we could. Yeah, but let's fuck. Let's just fucking power. <laughs> we don't need to spend an hour. I mean, all right. Uh, first question. We spend so much time talking about powerhouse Hobbs. I never expected to talk so much about powerhouse Hobbs on this show <laughs> ever in my life. Uh, first question here from the Admiral Dong. Do you watch any other promotions outside of New Japan? Even in a casual sense, wrestling seems to be on fire at the moment. And trying to keep tabs on everything seems to be a full time job for fans. No, let's move on. <laughs> no, uh, in all seriousness, like I really don't watch much other Puro. Uh, in the in the history of my fandom, do I have, um, you know, extensive uh, exposure to like the classics? Sure, like I've watched tons of All Japan, tons of Michinoku Pro, tons of All Japan Women's, all that shit. You know, JWA. But like in modern times, do I, am I currently watching Noah? Am I currently watching All Japan? Like, no. If we weren't doing this show, I probably could and would cherry pick more from what we're doing. But like, this show's quite a commitment. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, the only other promotion that I keep up with everything is AEW. Um, and I watch. Well, and, and, you, watch, you watch everything? Well, no, I will say not. I watch Dynamite. Dynamite, I watch every week. Rampage and Collision, it, it depends on what's going on. And, of course, I watch all pay-per-views. Um, but, yeah, I don't watch Noah. See, I, yeah, no. I know. I don't watch Star- Stardom anymore. I'll, I'll shoot in if there's a really good match. I'll I'll cherry pick. But I, I don't watch a full show of any of those promotions. Yeah, if I hear, like, there's, oh, there's a match of the year level thing you need to watch, I'll, I'll watch it or, you know, WrestleMania, uh, you know, it's WrestleMania weekend, you know, I, I watch. Uh, oh, know. I, <laughs> I'm ashamed to admit it, but I watch every WWE pay-per-view. It's Peacock, baby. I got it, you know, <laughs> I watch it. But uh, I watch most, if not every AEW pay-per-view, but I don't even watch every Dynamite anymore. I, I'll, I'll, I'll parachute in when there's a really good show or like a big angle coming, but. I don't even watch every one of those shows. Yeah. So there's a lot of wrestling out there. Uh, next question here from Jace K 2002 of the guys that you think have a super low or no chance to win best of super juniors. Who would you most like to win? Well, my favorite junior is Doki. He's not going to win, but I would, I'd probably fucking freak out if Doki won. Yeah. I think if, Doki won like we were we have to have a crazy like celebration ceremony on this show like drinking champagne on on the air like spraying champagne on my head and shit (laughs) yeah definitely uh big Doki 
uh, Ready Mulberry nine six three four. Do you also think that Noah currently has more wrestlers in the main event scene that can put out put out on put out outstanding wrestling matches? E.g. Kano, Shiozaki, Kitomiya, Soya, Lee, Doctor Wagner, Jack Morris, etc. Than NJPW. To be honest, there are very few guys on the New Japan roster right now that I would put my money on that they are able to put on classic main event matches of the for the ages. Maybe Cobb, Shingo, ZSJ, Sonata on a good night. Other than that, everybody has either left the company or is too old and beat up or simply not good enough yet. Maybe. I don't watch that shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't watch Noah, but even though I don't watch, I don't hear a bunch of other pundits being like, there are five-star matches every weekend in Noah. I haven't heard that, but I've heard that they're having a good year, like a, a, like a rebound year. I have heard that. Yeah, I have heard but, that, but it's not like, I'm, but I don't hear like, oh, you need to go out of your way and watch, you know, Kano versus whoever like I, I I don't know maybe I'm who are, your, who are your top tier top tier performers when it comes to New Japan um Shingo Shingo Saber yep Ishii yep Hiromu yep um those are your four that are like for sure for sure I'd go Gabe Kid. yeah I'd go Despy. Desperado that's six right there. Tai Chi. I I would go Tai Chi for sure. Um, that's seven. This guy's got how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, I'd probably go. Would you go Hanare? I don't know. I, I think he'd be a fringe. He's a fringe. He's a fringe guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you got Suji. Yeah. I got Shota. That's like nine right there. Yeah, I I think people are sleeping on Suji. I think people are sleeping on a lot of New Japan's roster, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, Next question here. Yeah, ELP. That's Uh. 10. Uh, next question here from uh, Def Triangle 720. Robbie Eagles. Yeah. Robbie's great. Uh, says, do you think by Dominion time they finally fix their too many titles problem? I think the company needs a clear focus and having so many belts makes it harder for everyone to follow which belt is important and whatnot. Bro, we got bigger problems than how many belts there are in the company right now. Let's... <laughs> <laughs> Let's fix some other shit and stop worrying. Yeah, that the, the belts is the least of the worries they got right now. That, that's a minor issue that could easily be fixed later. Yeah. He also asked, "Who do you think will replace Yo?" We know that already. It's going to be Ooh, Kushida. Kushida. <laughs> uh, do you think it's finally time New Japan bring in some new faces to each division? It feels like such a stale roster. With the lack of new faces and matches from the junior tag to main event heavyweight title picture. Maybe, but one thing I will commend them for right now, they're balancing a lot of storylines with a lot of different divisions and a lot of different characters all concurrently. Not just across the roster, but across different promotions and different regions of of the world. Concurrently. Yeah, and, and there have been new faces um, in the mix. I mean, Drilla and Clark Connors, that's a, that's a fresh junior tag team. Uh, you know, Gabe Kidd's in the mix. Uh, Suji, Umino, you know, the, there are new faces that they're getting the fix. They just need to elevate them. Um, let's see. His last question, what do, who do you think will win the belt off of show? I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, I mean, if I had to, you know, if you you held a gun to my my head and said, you know, put some money on it, I would just say Hiromu because <laughs> that's what the uh, it's always kind of the fallback. But you know, who knows? Maybe TJP with this whole, you know, him being the captain now. It kind of feels like TJP might be that guy. Yeah. 
Uh, next set of questions here from the Discord. Daddy MJ says, "Is Rocky a VP of NJPW America or NJPW proper?" Uh, so I don't know. I haven't followed up on this question to really look into this, but from so, what was announced was that he was a VP of America. But it almost sounded like there was an another uh, promotion recently, based on some of the weird wording of different you know posts i don't know yeah i think everybody's kind of had things mixed up well according to the observer i mean dave said that his role was you know like vice president of talent relations for new japan of america and somebody that we talked to kind of said yeah rocky's gonna be you know taking over kind of booking the shows and being in charge of some uh, details are, are all revolving or more details around revolving around the, the U S show. So I feel like it's mainly a new Japan of America position, but who knows? Maybe there are roles that bleed into new Japan proper. I hadn't heard anything about him being the VP of new Japan period, you know, but maybe, I don't know. Maybe there's something we're not privy to. Maybe we should, uh, Put the call in. I don't know. Yeah, or or you know, we could wait. Uh, you know, seventy episodes for uh episode uh four hundred when, when Rocky makes his uh his hundred uh appearance, hundred episode appearance, and we'll get all the details then. Uh, next question. He says, "Is Moose the rightful GHC champion now? Will we see a challenge in the Impact Zone this Tuesday or whatever?" <laughs> So I, I guess this uh, listener is asking about the fact that Nick Nemeth, the current reigning global heavyweight champion, lost a title challenge to uh, Moose. So lineally, sure, Moose is the champion, I guess. And, you know, Moose has been on uh, an NJPW show before, so it could happen again. <laughs> Uh, next question, he says, uh, Gato hasn't booked a competent title run for any title in God knows how long. What's more important to you as a fan, a great chase or a great run as champion? Does that sound true to you, Jeremy? Has Gato not booked any title competently in forever? Well, I guess it depends on what your, you know, forever is or how long your time frame is. I mean, I feel like the the Shingo world title run was booked pretty good. I mean, that was three years ago. Bro, I just think, like, most recently, like, Zack Sabre Jr. had a year-long reign with the NJPW TV title, title, 16 title defenses. Um, You know, I, I think of Hiromu. <clears throat> and his title run with the junior title. And in the first half of the year, we were saying he was on trajectory to be a, a, a wrestler of the year candidate. So I don't know if I can completely jive with that. And uh, Bishamon, they've had some uh, good tag title runs. There have been some really good tag team title. Run- and not only that, look at the title run that, um, that chaos Okada Tanahashi and Ishii had. As well as a couple years back when it was Bishamon and Ishii when they were the champions. So I, it's not holding water, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was the question again? But now that we've moved on from the first part where it's like he hasn't booked anything competently, I think we've established he has. Mm-hmm. But what's the question again? What's more important to you as a fan, a great chase or a great run as champion? Um, I mean that they kind of go hand in hand, right? A lot of a lot of guys that have chased and are really good chasers don't always have great title runs. Um, it's sort of like this weird dichotomy. Um, I mean, if I had to pick one or the other, a really great title run matters more, but I usually think it is predicated by a great title chase first. Yeah, I think the, the thing that's going to make the the most money would be a um, a title chase. I mean, a title run. Having a strong champion on top, I think, would probably be more beneficial. But then again, if you have a hot bay face that's great on a chase, uh, 
you could do any that. Omega. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Naito. Naito, yeah. <laughs> Uh, next question here from Reddit user PP McShitter. Early predictions on the Dominion card and G1 Climax. Do you think NJPW? <laughs> <laughs> this is PP McShitter. That's not the first time he's uh, sent a question in. I've never heard that name ever. <laughs> You're lying. That's the first time he's ever asked a no, question. No, no. M- Mr. or actually, I don't know if it's a, it's a, a Mr. or Mrs., but uh, PP <laughs> Hat. <laughs> This is PP <laughs> has uh <laughs> has <laughs> said that question before. <laughs> oh my god, what? <laughs> so uh he says early predictions on the Dominion car and G1 climax. Do you think NJPW will go back to two blocks of ten for G1 this year or stick with four blocks of eight? Looks like it's gonna be four blocks of eight. Um I'm thinking that the winner, uh, I'm just going to throw my general. Who do I think challenges at Dominion? Hmm. I, I, I feel like it's going to be the winner of Suji or Finley. But what, and I feel like Finley could win, but what they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Finley challenges. Finley loses. The winner of the G1 is Shota Umino, and then they face off at Wrestle Kingdom. Moxley versus Shooter in a rematch. Shooter wins the title. Yeah, uh, I think that would be uh, probably the most intriguing thing to do. Uh, moving on, next question. Uh, Ida Bills, why is NJPW allowing Gino Gambino to wrestle a backyard wrestling promotion in Geelong, Australia in May? Seems wild to me. He barely works for New Japan. Yeah. <laughs> they, I'm surprised. I didn't even know that Gino was still working. Good on him. Yeah, I did see uh, somebody respond to this question saying that this is potentially Gino's burner. And he was trying to get the date out there on the Reddit. <laughs> That's incredible. I love that. And, uh, yeah, if that is his burner, that's hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, good on good on Gino. I mean, why not? You know, um, let me just also say this: Gino is incredible, and I, this is not. Listen, if I didn't think Gino was incredible, I wouldn't say it. I think Gino on the mic is fucking incredible, and a guy that they should be paying whatever it takes to get that visa and get that travel and all that stuff squared away. He should be on the call like 90% of the time. Yeah, I agree. He, he's great. He's great. Uh, next question here from Sagal8860. Who's your pick for best Super Juniors? Who's in that again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on. Let me see if I can uh, pull a lineup up real quick. Let's go. Let's go Mexicans. Teton. Uh, yeah, I mean, he was in the, the finals last year. Let's see. Is this uh, 31? All right. Let's see here. So we got Sho, Hiromu, Kushida, uh, Deguchi, as of now, Desperado. Oh, no. I, I'm just going to say pro- Despy, maybe. There's Despy, uh, Kevin Despy, Knight. Hiromu. Are probably favorites, but maybe TJP. Yeah, I think what they're doing with storyline now, TJP. Um, I mean, I would love for Robbie Eagles to win it. Um, I agree, and you know what's funny? Robbie hasn't worked for the company all year. Yeah. So it would be cool to have him get a run there. Um, uh, it might be way too early, but what if uh, Fujita won? I would not be opposed to that whatsoever. Might be early, but hey, you know, give him a jump start. Uh, that's not a bad call. Um, yeah. Um, the, the the main thing, though, again, is whoever wins, if show's the champion, the winner's got to fight show. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Sad goes with a question. Do you think Oleg is ready for the main roster or the G1? The main roster, like he's in NXT. <laughs> is he ready for the call up? Is he ready to get called up in the draft? <laughs> what do you say? The main roster or what? G1. Probably both. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't see why not. Yeah, I mean, I think he's still a little green, but... He's definitely green. Just have him destroy people. Suplex people. Yeah, it, it, it's an interesting dichotomy because you have to wonder, like, are they... they they're doing this whole thing where they're like, okay, he's declared himself, he's no longer a young lion, but what does that really mean? Because we've seen a lot of times where guys don't go on excursion, they declare themselves as no longer young lions, and then from there they languish in the undercard for many years until a spot opens and they're ready to slowly elevate them. But he doesn't seem like the type of guy from a marketability standpoint that you want to do all that with. Um, But how many muscle bound freaks of nature who are, you know, fluent in the language and like, supremely talented from from a physical standpoint have they ever had on their hands like this uh i I would say very few um the last time they were in a similar position was like when katsuya kitamura who is now deceased was still a young lion and so i'm kind of wondering like maybe they're going to break tradition and do something unique and interesting and, and exciting with uh, Bolts and Oleg, and, and that's what I think a lot of people are hoping for, and I, I think that that's my hope personally. I would love for him to go on like a a big time run and like win the fucking title. Yeah, I think he has enough skill set to where you can hide the weaknesses and elevate him and, and make him a star. Like you said, there's so there's so many upside, so much upside with him that yeah, it's definitely worth uh, I think you know pulling the trigger early. Uh, next question here from Roasted Cat twenty three: Should Jinder Mahal join House of Torture and become the new IWGP champion? <laughs> no. Yeah, big no. Uh, Let's commission seven two five two. I have an idea on a concept that you guys might enjoy trying out, and what the fans of the show will probably like to hear. Whenever we're a- not doing it, period. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, whenever a champion loses their belt, you give a grade on their title run, then can explain the pros and cons of the title run. What do you guys think? You know, I've actually thought of a similar concept, uh, mainly because, you know, Rich Latta on One Nation Radio, him and James, they'll they'll uh, do like a eulogy for the AEW champions sort of thing and so it's I, I've sort of thought of that before where I'm like you know maybe when a title changes hands we could discuss it but I don't know I don't want to do all that what do you want to do no I, I think it's a good idea I like it I think it'd be a kind of a cool another analysis piece to yeah kind of give the final grade you know, we, you know we grade like tournaments and give guys you know grades in each block or whatever like let's grade their title run yeah, it's not a bad idea. Uh, next questions here from Hawaiian Punch BV. Uh, would any of the recent WWE releases be interesting in NJPW? Will they be the ones to not hinder gender? If gender became IWP champion, would he be considered a worse champion than Yasuda? Would the million dollar arm Veer be interesting for a nation that is also into baseball? This is. Too many questions all at one time. Um, well, I think it's just one big kind of troll piece. So obviously, Gender Veer and whatever the other dude from Hindu Sheer were all, they were all released, and they released that other guy from NXT the, or from the main roster, the, the kid that used to always like wave us into the NXT shows. I forget his name, Von Wagner. Oh yeah, 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 Von Wagner. Yeah, yeah, they they fired him too. Unfortunately, you, you know that they had him beat Kyle O'Reilly. You know, <laughs> did they? Yeah, that was like Kyle O'Reilly's like last NXT match was losing to putting over Von Wagner. I don't watch that shit. But uh, yeah, I'd, I couldn't see any of those guys work in New Japan. That'd be kind of wild. Yeah. 
Uh, also asked with the passing of Aki Bono, the question is why aren't there more former sumo in Purezu? With all the scandals in sumo, you'd think that they try their hand in Purezu rather than MMA. I know that Tai Chi would be all for this. There used to be a lot. I mean, uh, a lot more than there has been in recent years. I mean, uh, Ricky Dozan came from sumo, so did uh, Tenru, so did. Um, Oh God! What was uh, Koji Katao? There was quite a few pretty high-profile, like notable ones back in the day. Uh, obviously, John Tenta. Do you think the the rise of MMA has kind of made that a different switch? I, can't even, I don't know. Maybe I'm being short-sighted here, but I can't even think that many sumos that have ever jumped to MMA like Akabono did, but. I, I I couldn't even think of very many like s- guys with sumo backgrounds, um, like at all that that were like, I know I know there are a, a few guys that like trained in sumo wrestling, but like I can't think of any like actual ranked competitors that came from that world, other than Akabono who jumped into MMA. Uh, then he says thoughts on Ryan Garcia's upset over Devin Haney is the strategy now to ignore your mental health and snort large amounts of cocaine to be a better fighter. Work for John Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I have I honestly haven't even seen the fight. I was looking for a stream the night of the fight and I earlier that day was driving and I was like you know, I know it's the fight game and anything can happen, but there's zero percent chance that Devin Devin Haney loses to Ryan Garcia. So like I went to bed that night pretty confident, not even like anticipating watching the fight. And then I woke up and lo and behold, Ryan Garcia beat him. Um, I do think that there's probably something having to do with the fact that the guy wasn't weight drained and Devin Haney was. Um I, I saw the pictures from from the the weigh in, and Devin Haney literally had like his eyes were so baggy and purple and sunken in that fans were hypothesizing that he got beat up and had black eyes during training camp. But it, it wasn't. It was literally just he was weight drained. And I know it's 140, and I know he he's fought at lower weight classes in the past. But like as he's maturing and filling out, he's having trouble even making 140. Whereas Ryan Garcia, the man came in 3.2 pounds overweight and didn't even try another. He he had no intention of making the fucking weight. And I think that definitely, I don't want to take away from his win, but it played a huge factor into what took place between these two guys. Uh, next question here from Dark Soldier says, I think at this point, it was a month ago, but young boy, you talked about how Liger should have transitioned into heavyweight back around the 2000s. While Liger's legacy is cemented, I can't help but still think about what you said and how Liger being in the heavyweight division could have helped the product actually and further help his career. If he was to win the world title, where would you see him winning it? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's a really incredible um, fantasy question. And I mean, I've never thought of that. I, I don't know. Just off the top of my head, I think of like 2001, possibly like around that era. But I, I don't have a, I mean, ideally, he should win it like in the Tokyo Dome, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe that could be a, a Patreon project. We we look back on one Liger should have won. I mean, but he just he I don't know. It's it's all fantasy booking because he was never. I mean, I, I appreciate what you're doing there, Jeremy, trying to make more money off the Patreon. I'm, I'm there with you. <laughs> trying, trying, trying to work these marks. <laughs> <laughs> you can fucking work in the heavyweight division all, during that time, you know? So, I don't know. It's uh, all what it is. Yeah. Uh, next question from Dr. Lariat. Worst hair, Tenzon, Kushida, Great Okan, or Naito? He says it has to be Kushida with his barber for getting that strip of hair. Un- until he said something about it, I wasn't paying attention. Now, when I watch Kushida wrestle, I'm like, "Oh my god, he does have like a strip in the the middle of the back of his head. Like, it looks terrible." Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> uh, but it, but it's either worst out of this few he listed here. I don't know. 
to me, wrestlers can't have bad hair because they're wrestlers. Like, you know, it, it, having bad hair is part of their job. It's their gimmick. <laughs> I'll just say I wouldn't want any of these guys' hair. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Next uh, set of questions here from Death Triangle Seven Twenty. Is it time New Japan hit the reset button at Dominion? Too many belts, lack of focus, lack of fresh ideas slash format. What do you mean? You want them to pull a WCW Two Thousand <laughs> and reset all the titles and everybody every- come in, vacate your belts? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> uh, uh, do either of you think Narita versus Mox is a big enough match up for a Dontaku main event? Uh, we'll see. The ticket sales will tell us whether or not it is. Yeah, I mean, you kind of talked about it, touched on it earlier. Like Narita hasn't picked up credible wins, um, but again, it's House of Torture. We've kind of seen what happens when these guys are in a main event. So yeah, the ticket the ticket prices will tell us. Uh, do you think that it's a bad idea to have Naito win the belt back soon? I think they have two because they still need a big enough name to main event the Dome, and Naito versus a young talent is far more important than Mox versus whoever at Rust Kingdom. Who asked that? Death Triangle. Shame on you, Death Triangle. <laughs> no, yeah, I think it would be a terrible idea. Um, I mean, if ultimately your whole thing is that John Moxley isn't big enough of a draw for them to have the title on him, like in the domestic market, then they just should have never moved the title away from Naito in the first place. Um, you know, I know a lot of fans are anticipating that they go from Naito to Moxley back to Naito. And who knows? They might very well do that. I'm not even denying that that's a possibility, but it just would be so dumb to do that at this point to to just create if we want to talk about devaluing the title a short-term transitional title uh reign by john moxley just to turn it back to naito really serves nobody or does any justice to to anybody that's involved in that yeah that's that's seriously like what what's the point (laughs) what's the point at the end of the day he needs to drop the title to a new guy that they're trying to make whoever that might be. Yeah. And I think the story is right there with Umino. And I think it's very important to elevate Umino and all these young guys. So why not do that story and have him be the one to quote unquote, save new Japan and, and win that belt in the Tokyo dome. I know that Naito's talked about doing the roll call in the one of the baseball stadiums. I don't know which one. And so they're, they're aiming for like this summer and they think that he wouldn't have, mentioned that if he didn't have real sites to do it and my whole thinking like is that if that's what we're doing we're just moving the title to moxley so he can turn around and drop it back to naito then we're back in pandemic times we might as well just go back to jingu stadium it's not that different from evil <laughs> you know have, having a cup of, of coffee with the belt and dropping it back to naito like it, this is the, this would be the kind of booking that got us into this situation in the first place. Yeah, we should be moving past this. Yeah. Uh, it says we are approaching six months of this new period of New Japan. What should New Japan avoid doing in the second half of the year? Sucking. <laughs> Bad <at> booking. <laughs> yeah, be better. <laughs> Um, he says, what would you like Dominion 2024 to look like? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't book out the whole card at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's well, I know it's only two months away, but there's still a lot of big shows in between now and then. So, I mean, the title uh, scene could look completely different by the time we get to Dominion. It seems like in the main event, though, we're probably going to wind up with Moxley and uh, maybe I don't know. But would they do two foreigners in the main event of Dominion? I know, that's the thing I'm thinking of. Like, would they do Finley and Moxley at Dominion? That seems a little crazy. It might be Suji. I know that we've been projecting like Finley this whole time, but like Suji would be much more in line with the whole. Raywa Musketeers motif. Yeah. 
My only issue with that is I don't want Suji to lose. Like, if Suji's challenging, he needs to win. It doesn't matter what you want. <laughs> <laughs> I I agree with you, but they might just do that. Yeah. Um. Do you think New Japan are just afraid to remove people from the G1 and have the format for the G1 go back to 20 participants instead of overcrowding the tournament? Yeah. Yeah, I do. There's definitely this kind of, you know, loyalty thing and wanting to reward people who have stuck around through COVID and have stuck stuck around through hard times. And yeah, they're, I think, yeah, they are afraid to cut people from the tournament. Um, so should New Japan just do a invasion angle to make Forbidden Door three different? No. Yeah, I feel like this this is now a third. Like the the invasion angle would have been the kickoff, right? At, at this like, point, like how how would they be invading? They've already been there before. Yeah. I mean, the like, titles defended on Wednesday night because we'll have. <laughs> Uh, it says, I know Puro likes to make things as simple as possible, but maybe they should change their format for how people challenge for titles. For example, how come Gabe can challenge Shingo for the Never title, but Gabe did lose to Shingo in the New Japan Cup? I mean, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just bad booking. I mean, they could have easily put Gabe in another bracket and not have him lose to Shingo. Or they could have had Gabe pin Shingo if they knew Gabe would have been challenging Shingo in the future. Yep. Um, he says, if you can pick four talents from AEW to send on an excursion or loan to, to New Japan, who would they be? His picks would be Top Flight, Daniel Garcia, and Pentagon Jr. I don't know. Uh, Will we'll Ospreay. <laughs> Kenny Omega, Kazuchika Okada, <laughs> and Brian Danielson. Notice we didn't say Jay White. <laughs> he, he can stay where he at. <laughs> uh, no, but Swerve. Yeah, I, I would love Swerve to come over for a little bit. That'd be cool. Uh, I would love Lucha Bros in the tag division and Phoenix in the junior division would be dope. Uh, what would be more beneficial to the company? Naito, the top draw, regaining the world title at the show Naito has been begging for, or a new gen who the company have to push in order to become stars for the company? In my opinion, ultimately, the, the reason we're in, one of the big reasons we're in the position that we're in is a lack of pre-planning for everything that's taken place they 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 waited too long to push the younger generation to get them ready for the fallout from losing all of these guys to aw and wwe and everything like that um so like in the short term would it be a benefit to have naito carry the strap and have his big moment in the baseball stadium sure you know it it helped during the pandemic and uh you know, I'm sure there's a lot of fans current day that would be happy with that. But at the end of the day, we don't have stars ready to go and they need to be making these guys now. And even if it hurts in the short term to push a new star versus the short term reward of like having Naito win the title, you know, on a big stage and everything like that. But like we just get we just had Naito win. You know what I mean? He, he carried the strap for a few months. It's time for them to make some new guys. And if they don't, if they go the Naito route, they can do that. But it's going to hurt them in the long run. Yeah, we have a over-reliance on that past generation. And, you know, we, we thought it was sweet. We thought Okada wasn't leaving. We thought Osprey wasn't leaving. We thought Jay White, Ibushi, Kenny... You know, we thought all those guys weren't leaving. We thought Tanahashi wasn't going to get old. We thought Ishii wasn't going to get old. And, you know, look where we're at now. So, yeah, I totally yep. agree with you. We, we need to build up Shingo. I mean, um, Suji, uh, Umino. You're right. We we do need to, b- yes, build- to build up 
you know? <laughs> he's a guy. He's an old guy that they should be out, be pushing and relying on. Uh, this next question: uh, Do you see? Did you see that Finley tease a potential new member for the War Dogs, and the person is targeting Naito specifically? Hypothetically, let's say Nakajima does join New Japan. He's signed for two years. Should New Japan put him with the War Dog or give him his own group? I don't know, but uh, br- let's bring him in. Yeah, I think he, he should definitely be in. I mean, it doesn't really fit the War Dogs um, look, I guess. I don't know, but I, mean, I guess he could. Um, I mean, wh- that could be a starting point. And eventually, he can get his own group. But yeah, let's just, just get him in the door. Uh, do you think New Japan has a pacing problem? Sometimes, I mean, I think that uh, I don't know what he mean, what in what context he means if he's talking about like story beats or like an overall show. Yeah, he didn't uh, specify. Well, I'll just say that I think that the shows are too long. I I think they can be. Um, more like so some of those like two night shows where they separate the title matches. Like if we were getting like one big card that's going to be four hours and they're all title matches, all storyline. I'm like, cool. But then, you know, when you have those like multi night shows and then it's like, all right, you get two title matches per evening and the rest is undercard. Then yeah. And those become long. Yeah. But even like a cork and hall shows often like three hours. Yeah. Got to, got to, you know, entertain the fans. <laughs> yeah. Um, since battle in the Valley, does it feel like Gabe Kidd has shown more leadership by example with his performances and his promos? He's been the one that has been the most consistent. And when he's with Drillock and Clark, he feels like the leader in the bunch. Yeah, I, I've heard some uh, scuttlebutt from different people who sort of. Uh, picked up on this idea that recently with some of his promos and some of his actions that he seems to be taking more of a seniority like position, you know, in terms of the kayfabe within uh, war dogs. I don't know if that's true personally, but um, I think it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Yeah. I mean, we, we've talked about how awesome Gabe kid is and yeah, we'll stay, stay next to Finley. He definitely stands out more. And his last question here, do you think it's a bit too early to let Bolton no longer be a young lion when he doesn't have a distinct character and style? Yeah, I mean, potentially uh, that was kind of an issue for Hanari back in the day, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah, I think if he's going to, you know, do the early graduation thing, like he kind of like Kevin Knight needs to, you know, have gear, have a persona. And, you know, introduce you know, for him, you know, he should be throwing people around. He should be doing big suplexes, big power moves, throwing up dudes in a torture rack, you know, just mangling dudes. Well, that's going to do it for all the questions. Uh, let's wrap up here with recommended match of the week. Um, last week, I recommended uh, Roderick Strong versus our good friend. Rocky Romero from Battle of the Belts 10. So uh, between the two matches that we watched, I thought that they were both uh, kind of in the same vein, like very, very good matches, maybe not like something I would highly recommend or anything like that. But the one thing I noticed between the two was how, and this is not to say anything negative about uh, all four workers are incredible, but like, Damn, I fucking love Roddy Strong and his work. Like everything he does looks like it's a real struggle and a real fight, you mm-hmm. know, and it's not like he's doing things very differently from everybody else, but he just has a certain kind of gravitas to to what he's doing and, and making it feel more visceral, like just the little things. Um that was one thing that kind of st- stuck out between the two matches, but um yeah, I watched a a, a replay of this um, international title eliminator, Rocky. He's been on fire all year. He had a good showing. These guys have worked together for years, dating back to the ROH days. Um, but I didn't think it was like any sort of like real blow away match. 
But one thing that was notable was Rocky was on a huge run at the tail end and was just a house of fire and, and hitting everything. And then suddenly out of nowhere, Roderick Strong hit a huge like counter knee and picked up the, the clean one, two, three pin, which I thought was a great finish. Yeah, other really, uh, you know, kind of a flash finish there. Yeah, Rocky hit that super slice spread from the top. Yeah, he was hitting all these big maneuvers and he had to uh, also fight off the, the kingdom on the outside. They were kind of distracting him at points as well. And there was all, all the kind of heat between the best friends. So he was out there by himself. So, yeah, it was kind of three on one uh, at some points. But, yeah, that towards the end, yeah, he was able to reel off all those big moves, um, get those great near falls. And I think this... Uh, this match could have been better on maybe a little bit of a bigger stage. This was, uh, you know, Battle of the Belt. It was a third hour after Collision. Um, I feel like a, you know, you had to put this match maybe on a pay-per-view and give them time. Like, I think they could have probably had an even better match. But for what it was, the platform it was, I think it was a pretty good match. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. And then you recommended our good friend Robbie Eagles against Kushida from the uh, Stampede show in Australia that uh, Bret Hart put on. Yeah, um, I thought this was pretty good. Uh, it maybe it didn't hit the quite lofty um, expectations I would have or hope for for a first time matchup between two guys of this caliber. Um, that's not to say the match wasn't good. I mean, it was perfectly proficient you know everything they did was pretty much flawless but it was it had very heavy like house show sort of vibes in my opinion yeah it was like if you said you know close your eyes and picture a Kushida Eagles match that's like 10 minutes and what would it look like this is kind of what I expected you know Kushida working the arm set up the hoverboard lock Eagles working the leg, set up the, the Ron Miller special. Uh, I mean, that's kind of the story of the match. I'm like, you know, the work was really good and everything that it was good. It's just that it didn't really hit that next gear or next level. And again, I don't have the official time, but it didn't seem like the match was that. I feel like it was about 10 minutes or so. And the finish kind of came abruptly. I think for me, it was like they're kind of going, going, going. And then boom, um, the finish kind of happened pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, Robbie Eagles did pick up the win with the Ron Miller special, which was uh, pretty good, but it was, it was, I thought it was a very paint by numbers match just done very well by two, like very high level professionals. Uh, it's not anything I would say, you know, go out of your way and, and check out because there wasn't anything in particular that to me stuck out as notable about the match, but um, Robbie picked up the win. Uh, he did kind of promo post show talking about how he has aspirations to win uh, title gold in that uh, Australian company, but that's pretty much it. You know, I, if, if anything, the only thing I would say between the two, they, they weren't that far from, from one another. They both fit the mold of what they need to do for the type of um, shows that they're on. I just thought, again, I thought Roderick's work was a little bit more dynamic than what I saw in the other match. Yeah, uh, I think Roderick Strong is very underrated. I see a lot of people hating on him, and I just think that, man, he's just, just a great pro wrestler. Well, um, I know that uh, maybe I didn't have the highest praise this week for the Robbie Eagles and Kushida match that I picked, but I am going to go back to the well, and I am going to pick um, a match from this past week, Pro Wrestling Australia Black Label Ringmasters event. There was a soul of PWA title match uh, that was very much hyped for, for several months between the former champion Tuckman and the new champion Robbie Eagles. Nice. Yeah, I have seen um, some people posting the good things about that. So I'm looking forward to check that out. Um, and for my pick, uh, I know you might not want to watch it, but we're going to pick, I'm picking the, uh, the title match coming up on Wednesday, John Moxley. Against Powerhouse Hobbs. We'll watch it. We'll figure, you know, we'll, we'll, it'll get done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's going to wrap things up for us here this week. So uh, next week, we'll be back to uh, review more of the Road to Wrestling Dontaku and uh, Wrestling Satsuma no Kuni. 
If you enjoyed today's show, please consider making a donation by visiting socialsuplex.com slash donate and click on the donate button under the Keeping a Strong Style logo. Make sure you connect with us on social media on X. Follow us at KI Strong Style. Follow the network at Social Suplex. Follow me at Jeremy L. Donovan. On Facebook, follow us at Facebook.com slash Social Suplex. Also in the Wrestling Square Circle Facebook group. On Reddit, I'm the Pro Black Guy. Josh is keeping a strong style. On YouTube, we're at Social Suplex. You can join our Social Suplex Discord server to interact with us and other wrestling fans. You can email me, Jeremy, at SocialSuplex.com. Check out all those shows that we have here on the Social Suplex Podcast Network. One Nation Radio with Rich Latta and James Boyd. All Things Elite with Floyd Johnson Jr. and Austin Sumowitz. Imps WWE Adventure with the Implications. Matthew Mayer Wrestling Art with Chris Things. Tunnel Talk with Allie, Ann, and Leah. And the Trish and Sarah Wrestling Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a rating and review. And we will catch you next week on Keeping a Strong Style. The Ace of podcasts it's your bun thank you for listening to keeping it strong style we'll see you next time